Greetings, everybody, and welcome, welcome to Discussing Tabletop. How is everybody today? It is. It has been a week, and I hope you're all ready. Uh, of course, it's uh, June twenty second. Yeah, and it's. Uh, I think I'll start referencing. It's hot as all shit out where I'm at. Like, and it was Same. like one of the. <laughs> I mean, actually, you... okay. To to be fair, it's only getting up to ninety today. Oh, oh, we got up to ninety seven here. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, we'll get the... there. We'll, we'll have heat waves where it's like one hundred and five for like two weeks. So, <laughs> but you're in a different I area in California the where yes. we have air conditioning. I I don't. Granted, I could I probably put in an air conditioner, but uh, I have to worry about power issues for the the house for that. So, I've just got three fans on high <laughs> right now, and it's yeah. it's having to do that. It could be a lot worse. It's not too humid. Uh, but otherwise than that, it's been a pretty okay week for me. I'll probably chat about it. It's just uh, on on Monday when I'm back to normal schedule. But I can safely say it's just been a lot less productive on this week just because of the heat. It's that entire thing is like when you're hot and yucky, you only get so much done. You like get the minimum done sometimes. You're like, I could do some more, but hot. Yep. Uh, ah, summer. Anyway, we do have a couple of topics, and one of the big ones is we will be talking everything that they've talked about so far for D&D 2024 from this week. There will be more coming up this next week, as they'll be continuing, they are continuing their previews of stuff, but we have a chunk of things to start off today. Before that, I do want to get up on the topics. I, I, I've been put on the docket that we're going to do that first, but uh, I... When Worm suggested, I agreed we should do the other two topics first, just because, you know, smaller topics. Yeah. So, uh, first things first, we have been getting information about uh, some Magic the Gathering stuff. There's a new secret layer drop, and of course the Assassin's Creed, is it a set like Lord of the Rings, I think? Kind of, maybe? It's got oh, okay. boosters, but they're like mini boosters, because they're only like seven cards. Do you have a link? So, yeah, let me give you the product link first, and then I'll put the mechanics link first. And the product link might have the uh, card uh, set. Yeah, you can click and see the cards. And then there's the uh, oh. mechanics link. Uh, Wait, didn't they yeah. already do some of these? Maybe another version of them? I don't know. I've seen, uh, well, I've seen, I've seen both the Animus I think there was a preview a little while ago. Ezio ones before, and I'm just like, yeah. that's too familiar. I think you because when... previewed it. Yeah, when they... I think, like, it was a while ago when they did, like, some announcements and stuff at, like, uh, one of the conventions or something. They threw out some previews of what was coming up. Um, but now we have, like, the full set of cards, we know what there is, we know the product is... I don't know, seven card booster packs, I'm kind of like, with collector boosters and bundles and starter sets, it's the, it's the usual jank stuff that they're charging an arm and a leg for this, so... I honestly can't give you whether or not it's gonna be worth it. Seven card booster packs are kind of... I don't know. They might be cha char charging like a normal price or more for them. Yeah. I mean, at least they didn't include the most recent one. <laughs> okay. I, I can tell you this. The only thing I'm going to tell you about the Beyond Boosters, they're 24 packs to a booster box, and seven cards in a pack, and it's $127. When a traditional magic booster box, it's a little more expensive now that they did raise the price, but traditionally was around 100 cards for 36 packs that were, you know, 15 cards. In. So, expensive for the uh, Assassin's Creed cards. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's according to Amazon. Anyway, the um, mechanics. Um... I mean, 
free running is basically, I think, ninjutsu cast a spell, or no, no, it's a little different. For cost, but you dealt combat damage to a player that's part of the or commander. Okay, that's basically like a mechanic we've had before: deal combat damage to a player, get something out of it. This is just you can cast things for a cheaper cost. Historic returns. Um, disguise is basically another. It, it's similar to an ability called morph. And what is cloak? Uh, the cloak card is about. It, it's another disguise mechanic. So they have a couple of stuff disguise mechanics for cards where you get like a token and then it becomes something else. Cool. Um, it's fine. Mechanics aren't anything to sneeze at. They're basically mechanics you've had before. And I don't know. I'm just. I think looking at the price point and, you know, what they're charging for the boxes, it just is kind of like that's the discouraging factor more than the cards. It's sort of like. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm still not fully aboard with the Universal's Beyond, but. I don't think it's something we can get away from, and I don't think Assassin's Creed is necessarily a terrible idea for something, because it is, as much as it does have sci-fi elements, most of the time it's just, like, weird medieval-slash-historic storylines, and that can fit in very well with the fantasy aesthetic pretty easily. Also, like, these, like, yeah, the Assassin's Creed... Thing- yeah, the weirdest thing about uh, Assassin's Creed is just that it's like, here's a whole thing that, like, here's a whole story that has nothing to do with the weird sci-fi elements, but then we're just going to tack those on at the end of every single one and confuse the hell out of everyone. Uh, someone tried to talk about how the story, has, the overall story has been upgraded, and it sounded like gobbledygook, because they've gone deeper and weirder, you know, in, in their storylines. They mm-hmm. just have. Like, there's ancient civilization that might be aliens mm-hmm. that were the ones that made the tree, which allows for the, you know, going, the, the, the modern, you no know, future time thing of going back in time in your own minds or something. I, it's, oh, it's, so it's they bonkers, didn't, bonkers they bullshit. Didn't, so they didn't explain it with genetic memory like they have up until, like... It is genetic memory, but it's also, like, the, the item... The thing they're using is based on a technology, which I guess ancient civilization, which was, like, the what caused the Templars, which may be alien or something. I don't know, or weird. It, it, well, it I was, know... Well, there was well, aliens. That, <laughs> that was a thing in even the second game. The there was game, aliens. It was, it, yeah. No, there was so, a whole thing. If you got, like, all the secret stuff, it's all, like... <laughs> You found out that the Garden of Eden was literally, like, the whole idea was that, like, Adam and Eve were two people who stole the apple and escaped from the aliens, giving them power to, like, help get rid of them, or something like that. Yep. Sounds about <laughs> so, right. So, uh, just, yeah, no, that's, that's, I know that, I know that part, because that's at least stuff you can glean from, like, the first two or three games. I'm, I'm just gonna continue to say that sounds about right. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, so, like, I have not kept up after the sixth game, basically the third, or, no, the fourth game, which is the third Ezio game. <laughs> uh, that's the last game I played, because it took them years to come out with the one after that, for whatever reason. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, weird storyline, it's not, getting back to the actual, like, you know, old magic version of it, it like, the... The overall storyline, I I didn't notice in any of the cards easily that there was anything linked to that. I guess there's like some cards that reference it, but most of them are actually just historical characters, you know, time period of your choice doing, you know, assassin stuff. I think that's fine. It, it's not a terrible choice. Eh, there's a bunch of weird shit in here. Anyway, I'm going to walk away from this now. Uh, the Secret Layer Drop. Uh, let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about that because it will be... more annoying? Less annoying? I don't know. Uh, like, the first one is just... Yeah. Here's the thing, and I think I agree with this. Is, is Someone said this. Is 
the art style could look very cool. If it's unreadable, it's not very helpful. And this is sort of readable, the first one here, the Da Vinci designs. It's an interesting idea of having, like, you know, um, stuff in a, like, Leonardo Da Vinci style manuscript. It's kind of mm -hmm. neat. It's still pretty hard to read what the card is and does. I'm going to say. Yeah, you could do the style, but still have clearly separated areas that are uniform. Yeah, just even having the writing a little darker or something. So, um, did another Assassin's Creed where they just reskin legends. That's whatever. Um, I think we. we We've already had the Hatsune Miku, unless it's a different one. The frick? Uh. Everything okay? Oh my, I have no idea what's happening. Okay. On my keyboard. I literally am typing and random letters are coming up. <laughs> mm. Hold on. Can you think of a the bounty I bought? Oh. No. Okay. So, oh, okay. this has happened before. Oh, okay. It's working again. That was cool. a little weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was trying to look something up and I was just like, why can't I type? I'm really bad um, because every time I go to the grocery store, I walk to the baking aisle just uh, to see the what's worst. there. I know I it's right there though. Everything. I know normally yep. at most I can, I can count myself with like a donut because donuts like 70 cents, you know, and it's not too bad and it, you know, if, if I walk through it, and I always tell myself, okay, I'm looking at everything, and if mm -hmm. I really want something, I can come back and get it last. And I usually forget, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I kind of take a walk through the store, because when I like, pick up everything, so it's, uh, I don't really go back last. I anyway, a bar of brownies is pretty good, because there's some, they put a display of, like, brownies there. Uh, anyway, I don't know if this is the same Hatsune Miku or a different one. Um, oh, no, this is the second one. For second stop on her secret layer core. So they have a second Hatsune Miku, uh, one it sounds like. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was fine. It's probably already sold out. This was announced yesterday, and I'm gonna say it very well could be already sold out. That one at very least. I can see that one. Maybe the Assassin's Creed ones. Um. <sighs> Prince of Darkness is in an, is in an, interesting art style. I've seen this art style before. Again, it's another one of those ones where I'm like, this one is very unreadable. The Prince of Darkness. Um, um, Prince of Darkness. The one after oh, the yeah, these. Movie. Sorry, I, mm -hmm. I don't know why. I, like, I was looking for Prince as in, like, you know, royalty. <laughs> <laughs> no, Prince of Darkness. Yeah, I, under I, understand, I understand where, what like you were you? thinking. Yeah, I was looking at something and you said that, and I'm like, oh, that's not, that's something. And I'm like, wait, nope, okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is also hard to read. I, why do they keep doing this? I kind of get it. Like, I kind of get why people are getting annoyed at this. Oh, yeah, no, I think it's also, like, I think the other big thing is it's such a, like, a, sometimes it's, like, a, a, a wide variety in the quality, too. Like, we don't, there isn't, a, like, a good quality of, like, reprints. It's, like, Yes, you may love an art style. I can understand that. That might be a good reason. But there's a lot of people that, like, you know, <sighs> buying it for financial, like, you know, things too. It's like, oh, these are cards that I really could use or something like that. And, like, um, the Not a Wolf, which is the next one, I, I can say, funny. <laughs> it is funny. And I can say, just off the top of my head, at least three of these cards are ones that I use. I do not know if they're valuable. Um, mm -hmm. I use Beastmaster Ascension. I think that one's pretty valuable. It might have gone down since the last time I looked at that price. How the Night Pack I've used before. And then uh, Second Harvest I've used before. But um... I like the wolf token a lot. I think that's hilarious. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, regular human <laughs> guy. Look, it's that's creative. I'll give them that. Like... I would hope I like that this these... one because one it has a format and two it's fun. They're they're fun cards to look at. Yes. So this this is one of those ones that I could say, this one. If I, I had a lot of the cards are useful, but I don't know anything about that. Anyway, like just for me, 
I don't particularly have a lot of disposable income. Like, I can budget things, so this is, like, not in my budget for disposable income. But if it would, mm -hmm. this is the kind of stuff that would interest me regardless of value, you know, or use of the cards, that kind of thing. Now, granted, like, I'm a player of Magic, and I might be like, oh, okay, cool, I would like to be able to play with these cards, but certainly, yeah. Yep. Um. Anyway. I mean, if I played Magic, I'd probably get the Not a Wolf one, if only just for the Wolf token, because I think that's hilarious. It's very uh, nice. Let me have a. Uh, I'm. That's arts, usually how I go yeah. for things. An art I do series. like the Prince of Darkness. I, they're they're fine, honestly. The the I, I would not get the uh, the Da Vinci ones because it's like I literally just can't. Yeah, the Da Vinci <laughs> ones. They're an interesting style, but like yeah, it's kind of hard to read. Uh, they're so hard to read with this. Language. The I I'm not an Assassin's Creed fan, so like the Lethal Legends. Maybe if they are really good reprints, which I don't know off the top of my head because I'd have to like look into what these reprints are. Hatsune Miku one, it's the same kind of thing. I'm not necessarily, like, a big Hatsune Miku fan. Um, yeah, same. Some of the music from that. back in the day, I, I didn't mind, but it wasn't, like, you know, something I went out of my way to hear, that kind of thing, you know? I know the leak song, and that's about it. Yes. There's a couple <laughs> of songs that are, like, that are like that. Um, yeah, The Prince of Darkness, again... I really I like don't... the style, but I don't like yeah. how their their readability. I don't like I don't know about the cards. The style, I don't I don't like the style personally, but I don't mind the style. That's the kind of thing. Yeah, so that's the kind of one that if it had value yeah. in the cards. Yep. Would mind. And then uh, the I just, wolf I, one. honestly I, I you know, I say I like them. I really just like the dragon one. The dragon one is really dope. It is a pretty With neat the Prince uh, of Darkness posh yeah, sky raid. Posh. Care. Sky Raider of Care, yeah. That's a pretty cool dragon. It really is. They got a really good, interesting idea for it. And, I mean, the last one, the artist series, Julie Bell. Um, I, I don't mind the artist series, again. Um, they keep going through them. I don't know about the card selection. Shivan Dragon, I don't think it's very valuable. A Coat of Arms might be the most valuable one, but I think it's dropped because things have replaced it since then. I don't know if it keeps anything. And Soul Warden was also a little bit more valuable, but it's also like in a valuable, like common or uncommon. I don't think Soul Warden's rare. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm someone who thinks there is value in just having unique versions of cards um, if you want and use those cards. Um, I, I'm personally not against that either. Like, I, 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 again, it's that entire thing is that if certain ones, like, if it had a bunch of cards that I really would want, and it's reprints and I get them all together for, you know, even a little bit more money, and I really like the art style, I wouldn't mind it. Uh, you know, it would be, or, or I think it would be a really cool art style. Um, again, it's just that, like, cool art style does not pay for, like, five dollars worth of cards. It's the kind of thing you have to kind of think about sometimes. Um, at least none of them are lands. Let's say that. Yeah, I'll, th again, actually, in, so, although I don't agree with them being full price, I think the land ones are sometimes the coolest looking ones. <laughs> they um, are I feel so like they cool. should be much less than the other secret They are secret 30 players. bucks for something that's really cool, and value-wise, if you were ever really going to try to sell them, like, a buck. <laughs> yeah. Because when, when it comes to magic cards, you sell them for the value of the card, which lands are zero. But maybe you can get them because they're unique, so maybe at like, all. Yeah, like maybe a, a dollar a piece is like the most you could ever get a basic land for. I think some of those, because of just limited production, might be more expensive, and that's the only reason they're just basic lands. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's our magic thing, and then... Let's talk about Evil Genius Games, because this was an interesting discussion. Because Evil Genius Games has done some good things in the past, and uh, I haven't really heard a lot about them, and it turns out there's some good reason why, and it devolves uh, good old cryptocurrency blockchains and NFTs. Um, basically, you know... <sighs> Yes. <laughs> I'm doubly down. Oh, uh, oh, right. Wait, so, yeah, we did talk about this. Who's Evil Genius Games again? 
What did they make? They've, they've done uh, originally D20 Modern and some other stuff. Uh, they worked on Dragonlance. I'd have to see their complete list of things. Uh, Evil Genius Games. Um, website. What do you have a full list of your games? Uh, Everyday Heroes seems to be their current thing. But they also did stuff like... Huh. A bunch of, like, themed stuff for the long of that one. Um, are these role-playing books that we haven't heard about? Maybe. Okay, so they're, they they do a lot, for their Everyday Heroes system, it looks like they do a lot of, um, licensed material. Because I'm mm -hmm. seeing, uh, Escape from New York, The Crow, Pacific Ring, Rim, Kong Skull Island, Total Recall, Universal Soldier, Rambo. Um... So that seems to be the thing. Um, yeah, uh, on Highlander too, it looks like for their Everyday Heroes stuff. That really seems to be the only thing they're doing now is the Everyday Heroes stuff, which is licensed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I could probably link an older article that uh, was connected to this. Well, there's a link in there for that in that place there. Uh, apparently, okay, so the, the original article was back from February, um, so this is an update on them that maybe we missed or something, or we talked about in a different way, but apparently they lost, they went from 20 staff to 6, which is a pretty big, uh, change. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, they had been dealing with the Rebel Moon stuff, too! I thought I heard them recently. Oh, God, that's right. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Were they the ones who made the Rebel Moon? Yes, like... they were the ones that were making it, and then everything and happened. Then... Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yep, okay. So I knew I heard of them recently. Sorry, sometimes it's hard to remember. Yeah. So let's go for, I'm, I'm going back to the older article now that was in there just to go about things. Um... So apparently, like, they lost a lot of money involved with the entire thing with uh, Netflix's cancellation, unfortunately, or with everything that happened with them. Um, mm -hmm. And they had had some successful uh, Kickstarters. Mm. Yeah. A lot of staff left. Um, yeah, and then they apparently have some issues with, um, uh, apparently a lot of the people left because of, they were thinking of using web free technologies, um, for a lot of their stuff there, mm -hmm. and apparently that's guess where a lot of the people left there, and so there was a presentation where, it, in a consensus 2024 at an event there, uh, apparently the Evil Genius Games owner talked there. Um, mm -hmm. When he had previously apparently stated that, you know, oh, they weren't going to be involved with any of that stuff. So they're kind of still involved with all that kind of stuff of cryptocurrency, NFTs. Shit which has gone really well for a lot of people. <sighs> okay, so NFTs aren't the end-all horribleness that a lot of people paint them as. Um, I, I agree, too. Reading... It's just, it's yeah. just the, the, the problem I mean, I... is, I think, is that people... So... Okay, why don't you go first, because I, I was going to say... Oh, I'll let I, you I... go first while I finish reading the last part of this article. How about that? Okay. <laughs> the entire thing is... Every time I see anything about it, it's someone who's using it to basically use it as an investment scheme that they're trying to get normal people in on as a new form of investment. It is a form of investment, which is in itself but not a bad thing. It's just people are taking advantage of it to basically get rich. And a lot of people that are buying into it 
aren't going to get rich. It's it's the, it's, it's 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 investment in another way. An investment, unless you know what you're doing in investment and actually do it correctly, you're probably going to lose all your money. And that's the so, entire same thing here. But, that's the way NFTs got uh, unpopular. Um, but what they really are is a mark of ownership, not of investment. What people were using is those marks of ownership. They're trading marks of ownership like investments on uh, basically images that had no value mm -hmm. in an attempt to like rile up the community. So what they're kind of doing here is basically like, I mean, one of the things he said, this doesn't sound horrible and I can see why it could be a controversy because they said they won't use NFTs. But basically what they're doing is they're basically saying, um, well, one, they are going to do a little bit of that, where they're going to basically be like, you can sell your things as NFTs um, on their site or whatever, or their new site that they're making. So that's whatever. But um, another thing they're doing is basically making it as a way of minting things you make. So that way other people can't just use them for you freely on the site, which doesn't sound like a horrible idea. <laughs> um, it, it really so depends on implementation. But <laughs> I think it's what you're um, saying is the actual item, which is an NFT itself, theoretically, there isn't really anything wrong with it. It's just the way that it has been used is really where it's at. Yes. In fact, um, there's a lot of ideas to go around. Uh, in fact, one of the things I really liked is an idea to use NFTs is basically receipts for something like concerts to prevent scalping. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's done this yet because nobody cares to implement this, but something you could do is basically if you sell it to someone, NFTs are tracked. So to, to legally, so to use an NFT, something that's marked as an NFT, um, you have to basically pass it by the person who basically minted the NFT. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what the blockchain is. So you, you have to change the blockchain. So it basically the blockchain is a chain of ownership so everyone it's kind of like uh, if you've ever seen those uh you know the the chain of evidence in like cop movies and stuff it's like that yeah it's like you have to pass it off every time um so like an idea i've heard is to use nfts as like a receipt um because basically it's harder to scalp if your transactions are tracked see that's the thing is that's something that you talk about and i'm like wow that would be a really good use of this technology it's just the problem we don't get that <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, and so it depends on how they implement it. It sounds like part of it is they're letting people sell their NFTs and the same kind of NFT bullshit that made everyone hate them. But they're also kind of saying it's basically a way of minting. Like if, if you make a character and other people, you they can pay to use it because like it's technically minted and owned. Uh, <laughs> so I, it, it's... Okay. You know, it's... I So, I they, they say both in this article, and it worries me, because it depends on what they focus on and implement. Now, here's the thing. The act of uh, minting an NFT generally costs money. So, it, de it could be a way for them to make money by basically becoming an NFT minter. Mm. Because you can... You generally... Because that's why... That's the whole thing about NFTs. People... A lot of people are like, oh, I'll make NFTs and then sell them. Well, the problem is, is it costs money to make an NFT, and then you have to hope your NFT chain, or your, the whole thing that before was you have to pay to mint an NFT, and then you have to basically try and sell your NFT. So basically, it was just basically trying to sell art <laughs> in the long run, uh, in the same way that art, so it's, it's just, just a whole thing. Like, it's just, <sighs> just terrible. Yeah, so NFTs themselves, as a concept, can work well, but... You, they just have to be used for the right things. They're not meant to just be used as a mark of ownership. Well, sorry. They're not, they shouldn't be used as an investment. They should be used as a mark of ownership, which seems like they're kind of doing, but also kind of not doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't read this article super thoroughly, but... <laughs> well, I again, check it out for yourself. Understand it. I don't know if this is the right direction for Evil Genius Games to be going, but it sounds like they're having a lot of issues anyway with everything that happened. Yes, last year with problems with Kickstarters that were pretty that were pretty heavily funded, apparently, um, and other stuff like yeah. that. So actually, yeah, okay. So this line is kind of something. It's like we're uh, so it's like the CEO basically said. 
Uh, we're excited about the idea that we can uh, use blockchain to be able to control the value and to create value around the objects which make up your character. Um, hmm. So that, so that, that uh, for example, an adventurer on our system, that some, that'll be something that you own as a creator from here on, but uh, the experience we're getting after web two experience. Uh, oh yeah, we don't want to expose the wallet. So, okay, there is something here using the idea of NFTs is probably gonna get them a lot of hate because of how much people hate them. But they're basically making it so it's hard. They're using it as a sort of encryption, which I don't, okay. I, I don't get where they're going with this. I'd have to like really be careful with saying things, but it's like, okay, this is kind of weird. I could be fine. It really depends on how they use it. <laughs> it really does. It's like, this is not enough to go off of, I'm going to say. Mm. Okay. Still, yeah. we kind of see how it goes for them. I don't know. I'm, I'm not trusting of it, got to be honest. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. But, um... It just sounds like, unfortunately, things aren't going well for them, and I feel bad for them, because, again, like, it, it seems like they were having some trouble last year, and the entire stuff, they were having trouble regardless, it sounded like, and then, like, everything that helped, helped with the, that was supposed to help with Rebel Moon, in fact, just harmed more. Um, so, look into it. Think what you want about it. Uh, there's the list there. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. So they basically the only issue is that they basically said they weren't going to use it because it caused a controversy pe uh, previously, or they like lost in. Basically, they used a technology which itself caused a controversy. So they said they're not going to use it because they like were thinking about it or something, and it caused a problem. Mm -hmm. And now they're looking to use it again. And that's basically the issue: is that like it caused an issue, and now they're still they're looking at it again. And they said they wouldn't. So it's basically, yeah, okay. So that that's the gist I get from reading this article a few times. Okay. They were like, we're anyway. not going to do something with this. And then they did something with it. Well, they did gotcha. something with it, and then it caused problems. And they're like, okay, we won't do this again. And now they're doing it again. Uh... <laughs> that's honestly probably the bigger issue. <laughs> yeah, rather than the NFTs. NFTs just have a very bad rap but that's just more because of how they've been used rather than what they are in and of itself. I Honestly, think it's one of those they actually, have more, they actually have more function than Bitcoin. <laughs> I, I think it is one of those unfortunate things that because of everything that's happened with them, I don't know if it will ever really find the use that it could have because of the controversy around it. Um, it's something that's been wholeheartedly corrupted by the people that have used it, and yeah, as you said, like, you gave a suggestion that was actually something that was really good use of this technology, and yep. we might never see something like that because of the, honestly, the tech bros, the asshole oh, tech we... bros who have done a lot of shit like this before. We will, in probably like 20 years, when they rename it to something else, when some guy becomes interesting enough to be able to rename it and then make it interesting and make it not related to that, it can happen. It's happened before <laughs> with technologies that are useful but ruined. Ooh. Uh, just give see. it time. Yep. So, give it time. Anyway. All right, let's hit the big topic for today. It's D&D &D 2020. All yeah. right. So, I made some notes from the original uh, drop. So I'm going to put a couple of links here as we go. Um, and I'm going to talk about, I guess, the full... The first, the, basically, Wizards dropped four videos? Yes. A, a big... Let's talk about core rulebook, player's handbook, and let's talk yep. about three of the classes. Maybe. Okay. So. Apparently, also did weapon mastery and character origin. 
They do they do have a little uh, links to those on D&D Beyond if you want to check out their news on those. But I think they did they talked about them in the, the main video and stuff like that. Oh, um, oh, okay. So it was part of so these were just snippets from the main one is what you're telling me. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Might have figured that so. out fairly quickly, but okay, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> So first off, I guess let's let's talk about some things that they that we have that we know about. Uh, we are no longer going to be in Forgotten Realms. We're moving back to Greyhawk. That doesn't bother me. I'm down. Don't bother me either. Shifting. I mean, uh, less weird than the shift they did from three point five to four. <laughs> that's true. Because well, did four go to Forgotten was, Realms? Because four. Three, okay, so three point five was Forgotten Realms, right? No, nope, three point five was Greyhawk. Okay, so they went to Forgotten Realms. Okay, so they did. I, I honestly forgot what 3.5 was. Um, so they went yeah. to, they did go to Forgotten Realms. They went to future Forgotten Realms in 4E. After the <sighs> material plane had collided with another material plane and caused a giant catastrophe. I, their storyline is dumb. I'm just going to say that. Like, every time <laughs> I've heard about it, I, I was like, this is a really dumb storyline. I'm yeah, sorry. 4E, 4E <laughs> was, like, 4E's canon was weird um they rolled it back for uh 5e though they basically were like that never happened i'm glad they did because it just was weird and confusing that entire thing but yeah yeah if, if you're unfamiliar with greyhawk it's it's basically a lot like the forgotten realms there's some differences in the way that they work on different on things and like you know uh set up on storylines and stuff like that but yeah. and like you know diff different deities and stuff like that yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, the core of Greyhawk is a little interesting. If I remember correctly, based on more, this is more based on something someone described. It's very much, uh, it's very much more focused on law versus chaos than like good versus evil, um, where it's all like civilization versus wilderness is more the idea of Greyhawk. I think that's true, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because that's a um. Order vs. Chaos is a lot less controversial than Good vs. Evil. Is it that depends. the way to talk about it? Maybe not controversial, but like that entire thing that like we are walking away from like some of the basics of alignment and walking away from it. Because good and evil are very morally gray, morally kind of like out there. And the ideas of yeah. like order versus chaos are just they are something that's a little bit more accepted as things to have versus each other, I think. Because yeah. it's sort of like, you either just follow everything and are kind of with order or law, or you just you don't. You're kind of chaos or anarchy. And yeah, you do so. have people in the middle, but like, yeah. It's, it's, also, in know. Greyhawk, if I remember correctly, again, I'm making a lot of assumptions because I have not looked at Greyhawk in a very long time. Um, <laughs> um, and it was ver it's very much, although law takes the side of civilization and chaos takes the side of nature, so it's more nature versus uh, versus uh, development is, I think, another concept to think about. Mm -hmm. That's why you got a lot more. I mean, again, this is the original setting where you had random encounters for just traveling. <laughs> like, you know, you had, um, you know, everything was super dangerous. Um, so it's like, that's kind of the idea. It's like you had to travel through the untamed wilderness, which is, you know, fighting back against civilization. And that's why you got weird monsters and stuff. That's some of Greyhawk. <clears throat> all right. So Not some all more of things, it, some of it. Some things from my notes before we get to, like, the articles. Yep. Um, we do have epic boons as feats, uh, 19th level feats. Yes, um, so you can only take them at 19th level and higher, which is cool. Okay. There, there is more of a focus on feats that you can get now too, so keep that in mind. Yeah. So we'll, we'll like talk more backgrounds give you something closer to a feat, although not quite as powerful as a feat. Uh, they're they are called a feat. They're like they're uh, called a background feat. They're called yeah, they're like background feet, actually. Origin feats. So you have origin yeah. feats, normal feats, and then epic boons. So three types of feats now, which yeah. is fine. You know. Um, yep. Magic item crafting is back in five B. Yeah, um, they have rules in the player handbook for uh, for simple things like potions and yep. very low level items, um, which is cool. D I actually like DMG's that they give that to the players. Yeah, and, and the DMG is supposed yeah, to be going to have a lot more. <laughs> yep. Um, so I mean, this is a thing that 
gotta be honest, it's one of those things that is perfectly fine, and, you know, if you have a problem with it as a dungeon master, that's a mistake you're making, you should be able to control it, and you, you, you control how much time and uh, material a person has, and then it's usually requires time and material for a character to make things, so you can... Yeah, I mean, Pathfinder has the same thing. They have basic rules for crafting in the player's handbook, and then more advanced ones in the DMG. <laughs> the same kind of thing, yeah. so... Um, or the guns in the player's handbook. I, oh, they put guns know... in the player's handbook? <laughs> yes. I didn't hear that part. <laughs> I yes. missed that part. Um, it, it, we know this for a fact as they were showing on during the stream. They did show some art, uh, or pages, I should say, where they showed the guns on display with all the other weapons. So we know that, um, and I think they, saw, they we didn't really get a good view of the stats and stuff, though, but uh, pistols... Flintlock pistols and flintlock rifles are in there. Yeah, okay. So kind of like the the high fantasy, uh, or sorry, the yeah, the magic, the basically the gnomish <laughs> technology kind of thing that tends to happen. That, yeah, I, okay, what, that's I don't know what it would be in Greyhawk, but I would know it was gnomes that made it. Names? It's got all those species, I think. Okay. Because I, I think technically Dragonborn are originally from Greyhawk and were introduced to Forgotten Realms because they weren't in any of the old world. Yeah, I do know they weren't originally in Forgotten Realms. Uh, I know that was a technically a 4th edition edition. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do know in Forgotten Realms, though, guns and and basically gunpowder were introduced by gnomes. Their god basically gave it to them. Uh, so Got it. Remember, that's from Land Hand. I know because that doesn't surprise me from what I learned in Baldur's Gate 3, where gnomes just love gunpowder. <laughs> yes. Um, we, of course, have the changes to backgrounds and your species. Um, I, I We haven't gotten a full look at it, but, like, it's... It, I, again, species is a fine term. I don't really care. Whatever. Um, I, you know, I um, think it's not it's a bad honest, term. It's, it's technically more accurate, honestly. That's true, <laughs> um, and I don't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's actually the thing about that that doesn't bother me as much. It's all like races kind of assume that they're all the same people or like combinable in a way. That it's it's are... also like it's changed the way that the term is used. That's why I wasn't yeah. against us changing it. I thought it was probably a good thing. I just think like you know something cooler like ancestry. There's a couple other words like I like the word pathfinder. Uses your ancestry. That kind of sounds cooler. Species is very scientific and generic, which isn't bad. It's simple. I I think it's fine. I like it. I mean, like, yeah. I, I think it conveys what it needs to convey just fine. But, um, I also, in a way, like, the way that they've done it, I don't mind, where they changed it that your stats aren't tied to your uh, species like, anymore. Your species. They're, t <laughs> they're t tied to your background. I thought that was a really good move because it still would reflect that you could have things that are more natural to a species, but it wouldn't also necessarily be there. You know, yes. like, you could know that this, these guys tend to be stronger or tougher or something like that. I don't have to go through those stats. If my background is something where I wouldn't have lived up to those natural things, I could just kind of be average at them, you know? And I still think it's weird that orcs aren't necessarily stronger than uh, other races, but, you know, whatever. <sighs> I do agree it's still a little weird, but it's, it's better than nothing because we're not going to get it. I agree, because, uh, yeah, it's just the... I mean, to be fair, from a game mechanic perspective, it's better <laughs> um, to be able to just pick, because it's kind of like you don't want to be that so restricted, you know, like to other all the players. And it's like, again, it's when you and you can't play, like, you know, when you have to, you can't play a Minotaur wizard that will ruin, like, I've actually done that before when their stats were crap, and I was totally down with it, because it was just fun. But it's nice that it's better. You can actually play one that's me that's mechanically viable. <laughs> so well, that's why I, I don't I, mind it. I think again that's another another reason that I did like how Pathfinder 2E did a little better because both background and your ancestry give you stuff. And ancestry, you have the option of not taking the disadvantage yeah, and doing something else. Yeah, it's either uh, it's either two pluses and a minus, or uh, or is it three pluses and oh no, it's 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 two plus two. Two pluses plus a uh, and a minus, or uh, two or one plus, and then you always have one extra plus. I think is what it is. Yeah, I think it's I think it's normally like is it like it 
they give you one plus, plus they give you, like, some other stuff. Um, I'm just going to solve this real fast. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically, you either get three pluses, uh, two, two predestined, one free, and a flaw, or you get two boosts. So, of your choice. And again, that's a great way of showing it, because you could be like, hey, I'm quintessentially what what I'm supposed to be. Or, if you're doing a different one, that could be like, I am I stand out for my natural species in the lab. Which can happen. There, like, humans ha- have an average, but there are exceptions to the rule on the humanity spectrum, and I think it's fine for a species. You could have something that's you know, doesn't live up to the natural levels of strength and stuff, it could just be different. Yeah. Um, although that does remind me that the only way to not get, a, or to, to min-max in Pathfinder, the only way to get a negative is uh, by having that at the start. Anyway, um... So if you want a min-max, you have to pick a race that min-maxes slightly better. So that's kind of what it is going for backgrounds and species. Um... There are a couple of things that, certainly speaking, again, interesting ideas, but also, I gotta say, I, I, I'm I much more preferring of how Pathfinder did it again, and that's half, ha, uh, half species don't exist anymore. If you want to play half species, you're just playing one or the other. Uh, oh, that's just Greyhawk. No, Greyhawk has them. Does it? Yeah! Oh, sorry, I forgot. Mistar is the one that doesn't have it. Anyway. And the star is the one that doesn't have it. But Greyhawk has them. Half orc, half elf, we're in there. And, you know, again, it's like... It's... They're just like, oh, well, you can... You can do it yourself, or they don't exist. You know, in, in Vibe. Again, it's... I, here's another thing that I like the, the, you know, Pathfinder option, where you can be like, you can kind of mix and match, match... Mix and match with their rules and stuff a little bit, you know. So you actually are between two species, between two ancestors. But, um, okay, let's move on from that um, to a, a actually really good thing. Uh, potions, drinking them, bonus action. It's something that a lot of tables just did, but now it's officially in the rules. Yep, and like it's so funny because someone I was, I, I saw someone talking about this unrelated to the new release because what i was watching came out a while ago but they were talking about that rule and they said that you know sometimes people like you know they think only of uh healing for potions and they don't think about other potions which are actually kind of broken if you drink them as bonus actions whereas i'm like i was reaching my video i'm like i don't know well act of just having potions is like <laughs> you generally want to be encouraged to use them and having and the fact that bonus actions are rare i think it's better to have them as bonus actions <laughs> So you're encouraged to use them for action economy purposes. <laughs> hey, like, half finder. No one ever uses a potion in battle or anywhere around battle. It's always after battle healing most, but 99% of the time. Mm-hmm. Again, it's because it's a standard action. It's the same thing. Uh, we have been informed that the monsters will be changed and updated, but CR is not going to change. Okay, yeah, Greyhawk did have elves. In some of the original um, game stuff, though, they didn't have, a, like, a separate elf. Half-elves were just elves that had an origin of a human and a demon. Again, that's also earlier editions and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, because they didn't have, like, a separate half-elf race. I mean, this was also back when elf was a class. <laughs> really when dwarf was a class. Yep. Uh, a early D&D. Yeah, so, like, if you were a half-elf, you did, so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, so you're right, they do exist, they just didn't have... I think that I'm, that's probably where I got confused with them, is that, like, um, they didn't... So, yeah, <laughs> um, we are getting updates to monsters. They are going to be using the witch-like rules, witch light rules, where they basically uh, got rid of spells for monsters and gave them just Good. powers. Good. Um, uh, that's a thing. Uh, that... The idea okay. that mon- monsters need to, like, prepare spells and you can, like, change them out and stuff is fine. No one ever does it, though. And if you want to do it, you can do it anyway. You're a GM. I, I mean, that's the thing, is you could change it, but it's not balancing the CR then, because they're balancing it around the CR, and that's an issue then. That's an entire other thing, but CR is not fixed, so that's not really balanced. They're just rebalancing monsters. Hey, but 
actually like, that makes them more balanced because you can actually balance them because like i mean even 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 being able to say like they can cast this two times per day is I, like more balanced than uh i think it's the thing that five spells from the wizard spell i think the thing that <laughs> someone that, that i saw someone show off and i saw like evidence of it that that screams that maybe there could have been a little something different than what they did is someone took the and showed what the uh, Tasha's stat, I think it was Tasha, her stats, were, were someone from, you know, back in the day, you know, and, oh, here's the stats, here's the stack box, all, like, the spells and stuff. And then they look at Vecna. Vecna's got, like, five spells. As the greatest wizard of all time. Lich wizard. Honestly, though, like... Those are his, like, I mean, how many times can you use them? Like, are those are his At will, spells. but they're all, like, they're all, like, attack spells. Like, I think that's the thing is, it doesn't feel great for a villain. Like, that's another thing is, I like the villain with a lot of options, because then you could come up with plans for a villain and do different things. I understand for, for, for a the argument villain, for the other way. Yes. Fact is a final I, villain. Though. I, yeah, no, I can see. But in my opinion, if you're unhappy with a final villain, then... I mean, I think they're probably still going to be doing that in their, like, adventure books. Like, when they do... No. A f no, it's all... They, they do all the books now where it's just... All of them just have powers. <sighs> Again, it doesn't bother me that much. You can still make things up as a GM if you want to make things more tactical. But also, Again, like, they probably... <laughs> that argument is the one that I hate the most because they've spent ten years they haven't fixed shit. <laughs> After ten years. Oh, see, here's my issue with, with the argument with that reply is just that like every game is different, every GM is different. You're not gonna win I know. them all. Um, I know that too. I, I agree with I, that I too. It. Yeah. And I think the least common denominator of like making the monsters clean and static, and not making the GM have to make a bunch of decisions, is a better way to start because if you want to make a bunch of decisions then you can but if you don't there it is i think that is both a good and bad argument is the, is the problem because that I is agree. a good I argument think, i think it depends on who you are but, and what you like but. no i don't even think for depending on who you are i think it's just one of those things is it it fits with what dnd 5e is in a lot of ways as we talk about it it is the vanilla milk toast of RPGs that anybody can get into. Great for one shots, you know. I've always talked about that. I don't feel like it was been great. Like we're talking about 2014. I always said it wasn't great for the long term, like uh, campaigns. I never felt like it worked as well for those short little adventures for one shots. It's easy. New players are great for it. You know, it's the simplicity of it. And honestly speaking, in that respect, great for new GMs. That, that would yeah. be true. Oh, I agree. This is this. That that kind of change is incredibly dr great for new GMs, which I feel like but, is their target audience, so it makes sense. <laughs> it's not though technically because GMs tend to be people with a lot of experience, and there aren't a lot of people that would just pick it up and not need some skill. And I think it's it kind of is, I, it kind of isn't. Like I feel like it's that it, that happens more than you think. Like someone has to. It's like okay, well I guess I'll be a GM because all our friends want to play. We've never played before, and I guess I'll do it because I'm uh, the only that does one. happen. Yeah, it happens. A I lot. think <laughs> I feel like I think it happens fun. less now though is what I'm saying because we've already gotten a lot of people into D and D. It's not that we and can't expand the easily people. find games, but I don't know. I think it happens also way more in like smaller groups and smaller towns and stuff. But yes, I, we do have online I, stuff mm -hmm. where you can find people, so you're generally going to have one person who has experience if you find games that way. I think, I think for me, what I want to say about this is I think they took it too far. I think there was That's a good middle ground, and I don't think... I'd, I need think to see some, I'd need to see stats to really know. Uh, I didn't actually see Tasha's Vecna. Uh, like, I don't know if Tasha was the one they showed. It was one of the older ones. Vecna by the stats... Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, spellcasting. Yeah, okay. His once per day, he could use dominate monster, globe of ability, and plane shift only. Two times per day, dimension door, invisibility, and scrying. And at will, animate dead, detect magic, dispel magic, flying, lightning bolt, mage hand, prestigiation. So, his only attack thing is lightning bolt for magic spells. Hmm. He has, like, a melee weapon, which I guess is what he's supposed to be using. 
and you can summon some ghosts as a recharge attack. That's kind of neat, but as like a demigod lich, I feel like that's the kind of thing he'd have anyway. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to see, because like it, it is so... I'm guessing the one I'm looking at... Um... Here's, here's stats that I found here. Yeah. Vecna the... Archlich. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now, too. Is that the ones? So is that the new ones? That's or the one that just came one? out. With that's the one that just... Uh, oh, no, Kasha, this is the one that was just... Kasha's stats. Um, let me see if I can find Kasha's DMV stats. Igvil the Witch Queen? I think that's the one. Let me see. Uh, yes. So it's Igvil the Witch Queen, Queen who's the version of Kasha. And here's her stats. Yeah, let me, um, let me look at these. These might be the I, homebrew I... ones. There's an actual released version of it, though. But here, these might be the homebrew, homebrew ones. Because there's one up on D&D Beyond. But I, have, I don't have all the books on D&D Beyond, so I can't, act with, I can't access them all, you know? Yeah, I don't have Tasha, sadly. Um, um... But, like, it's got, like, a, it's got spells of all the levels, different slots, you know? Um, yeah. And again, like, I think the entire thing is, with a prepared spell slot block, I don't normally change those out anyway. You know? I agree. Um, uh, but, yeah, okay, so... I... Oh, uh, I... I get it. Wait. Oh, I couldn't hear you for a second. Okay, can you hear me now? Did I cut out? Maybe I cut out because I wasn't looking at my thing, so it might have been me. Yeah, Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, but I don't know, because here's the thing. I really like, okay, here's what I hope they do. And I don't know if they said they would do this. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember. Uh, I don't think they did. Anyway, something you I don't know a lot about if they the gave you, if you, if they gave you snippets of like how to run them, because if they made that a build really and good. how to run them, then that would make a lot of sense why they would go this way. That's I know true. they did I, that in 4E. Yeah. I love that in 4E is that they actually that say like, this, this character will do these tactics. I think that was also really good, too. Yeah. So, tactics would be great if they gave us that kind of thing. I don't know if they're going to give us in the new bestiary, so we'll have to see. Um, but again, I think we will see more on monsters as it comes out, and currently, as they're saying, it kind of is like a, mm, I don't know, but it's the same, if it's just the same old as Once Upon a or Witch Light, or something like that, uh, the Witch Light book, uh, I don't remember what it's exactly called. It's 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 what we've been established at. Um, yeah. So, hey, it's not backwards compatible, but kind of backwards compatible. Now they've, they've walked back. I, okay. I'm happy with this, personally. I agree. <laughs> okay. I do agree, actually. So to explain um, it, it is what it is, is if you are playing it, with anybody using 2024, anybody, use the 2024 rules, is what they said. Yeah. And you can have a not 2024 character, but it can only be a not 2024 character that you're taking in there using the 2024 rules. But if you make a 2024 character, it has to be fully 2024 character. Basically, yes. and you could use either or and the same set of rules but you can't mix and match character stuff. Yes. And, I mean, it doesn't address your concern, your worry of being able to bring in a weaker character um, just because some player didn't have the books. However, be honest, I think it fixes, my, it fixes my worry of mixing and matching is what I thought they were going to allow. I, that was the worst thing I agree on, which was the one I worried about the most is mixing and matching. But I still do worry that, like, you know... Again, we know there are certain classes and certain builds that have been buffed, others that have been hurt Nerf. by stuff in the build. We'll talk about that in a minute. But something, yeah. let's say, like the the monk. Uh, we haven't gotten the full reveal on that. We'll have to talk about that again. But we know the monk has been buffed by at least what they had been saying as of the last Unearthed Con, you know, yes. that they did for us. So if that's true, it's a better monk, you know? Yes. I, we can't say anything otherwise. You know, if you're playing an older monk... You're, you're SOL. You've got a lot of problems. Yeah. Or, or if you're playing a ranger not using Tasha's stuff in the first place, which was, was going to be help, you're still also SOL because they've implemented that stuff all. Yeah, well, Tasha's or Unearthed Arcana, both are fine. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, is the 
the Tasha's, the stuff they implemented in Tasha's, the version of that is what they were using for the Tasha's, I think, uh, Ranger, is what would yeah. become the Ranger we have now. So, yeah. a little bit more. Uh, well, they did, they did fix some other things with the Ranger. Hopefully they kept those, at least I remember them from the playtest. I hope they kept them where, like, a Ranger can switch their favored terrain, uh, like, at a long rest. Mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that where I'm like oh my gosh that actually makes things so much more useful because now you actually don't have to like worry about your campaign not being where you started yes so yeah the, there's, I mean, there's definitely some things that have been played around with we'll get to those but um, in general the non the backwards yeah. bang battle ability went out the window um, uh, well yeah okay uh, it did not. So I realize now what they were most worried about, uh, based on the th video. Um, mm -hmm. And this is, it makes sense. They didn't want to make their old adventures obsolete. And by updating the rules and allowing, um, not necessarily old characters, but allowing the old adventures to work uh, with the new monsters, which is why they kept the monsters in the new version the same CR as the old one. So any monster with the same name has the same CR. Meaning, it's backwards compatible with uh, adventures. Here's the now, thing that I kind of I feel... know where you're going with this. Yeah, I'll let you say. Because the monsters have been tweaked, and a lot of them have been made. Mostly, it seems like they've been trying to make monsters more of a threat. In yes. a lot of ways, they talk about. That does mean, and I'm going to say this here. Yes, it boosts. Yes, it's 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 better characters, it's not so much that I feel like you know, these char if a group of 2024 characters versus the same monster is effective, like, regardless of the monster kind of thing, you know, like, I don't think the 2024 characters are, like, power creeped to a massive amount, you know. I think that's what I want to say. I so, think the bigger issue is um, setting or, or uh, adventure-specific monsters. I mean, yeah. think about it, like, Strahd uh, yeah. He's in the back of the book. He is not, you know, he has a different stat block than a normal vampire. We might not have something like so, that in the book. So he might not be as powerful with the new group, which is power creeped a tiny bit. But, you know, like generic monsters, which is what they do for most things, which are like insert two closets and a night hag, you know, um, those will be scaled appropriately. I, again, supposedly. We'll, supposedly. Supposedly. I, I do think it's one of those things is with tweaking with the creatures without altering their CR, it does mean that they can say it's backwards compatible, but we won't know it's backwards compatible until we actually see the stat blocks or run it. Yeah, I mean, the idea, though, is is mathematically they should be backwards compatible. Uh, uh, or sorry, I should say theoretically. They're theoretically backwards compatible. Theory and practice are two different things. Exactly. Um, I mean, that's the thing. They may have buffed quasits way more, and so the night ha and not buffed qu uh, night hags enough, and so it's like it's not a difficult encounter because the night hag is not powerful. But again, even though the quasits are. More I powerful, don't feel like know? the player characters have been buffed in such a way that they're going to be a massive difference power wise from one to the other. Yes, probably in the long run, like you know, a fifth level 2014 monk is going to not be as strong as a fifth level twenty twenty four monk, but the differences aren't technically so huge when it comes to fighting the CR5 monster I think is what it kind of comes down I think it'll be like it's going to be tiny numbers here and there and I, let's say this here I don't know if they've had enough time to test this all out because they've only been working on this for like a year we know they only started it like last year uh about two years, though. I, no, like two years they've been working on Because they started a little bit before all the playtesting stuff. No, no, no. They, they started on this after the controversy last year. Yes. We actually know that. that. Was, I mean, at that point, it's more... It's that, That's almost two years ago now. Okay, year and a half. Yeah, year and a half. Okay, that, that's honestly... Okay, yeah. Still... You're right. For, for like, a lot of the changes they want to do, that's not a lot of playtest time. It doesn't mean they couldn't have done it. It's not a lot of time. Also, I mean, also, these are people who have also been working with it for a long time, so they probably had a lot of ideas already. Like, I know Chris Perkins and... Uh, oh, I agree on that, too. So it's like, I'm not saying they couldn't do it, but it does feel like... give it, put, it, 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 I would have liked more time, is kind of what I feel like, just, you know, just to make sure. 
there are ways to handle it without that. I mean, these games have a lot of math, so if you go like, okay, so these DCs at these levels are this, you know? So there's well, a lot of ways you can figure that out. In fact, that's what Pathfinder and stuff does, is they make it very know, mathematical but to make it fairer. Here's here's another issue that I can talk about right now that I, I heard, I was discussed and I kind of realized was a pretty big one. So, certainly speaking, for both clerics and wizards, we have less uh, archetypes. Because the wizards are only down to four spell schools. Okay. How did they choose which ones they wanted? Wait, really? That's weird. Yes. By D&D Beyond, and who makes stuff on D&D Beyond? That's why they weren't gonna... That's why there's no necromancer anymore. I mean, to be fair, some of the schools were trash anyway. I'm not saying that they weren't trash and couldn't have used buffs. What I'm saying yeah. is, they used what characters people were making on D&D Beyond. And the thing is, most people, most people make free stuff, and I'm going to tell you, there's only like three spell schools to options for D&D Beyond. For free. Huh. That you can access. But Wizards. shouldn't it... I thought they made it so all the core stuff are free at, at, at one point. It's only partially free. It's it, Last time I checked, which was like, it, it, it has been a few months, but last time I checked a few months ago, it was still oh, that one. Months. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you checked a few months ago, that's uh, okay. That's pretty recent. It's not super recent, so they could have changed it no, in the last month. That's recent, that's recent enough to where I'd worry about that, because that, that still stockpiles, you know, like you... Like, I could only access, like, part of character selection stuff as a person that doesn't pay. They, okay, as someone who handles data stuff, you can actually tease out that information. You can basically be like, okay, this is what people picked out of what they were able to pick. Yeah. Data for that. Did they do yeah. that? No idea. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's a thing that, you know, it's the fact way. that there aren't, you know, there are only so many people that pay, and how many people are, that pay are making characters on there. Most of the people that I feel like make characters are free characters. But also, how many people, like, it, again, it's one of those things is I feel like certain data could have been bad or gathered from talking to the community, kind of like Paizo does. You know, but... Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. It, it's... Uh, oh, I do have this here. Then you the, get... the, three, the four ones they have are Abjurer, Diviner, Evoker, and Illusionist. Uh, well, three of those are the best ones from the old book. Um... Why? It's the ones that are, were the best ones, so everybody chose to make them, so you didn't have um, to buff no, no, them. That's, that's honestly, I think more the issue is that they picked the ones that everyone picked because they were the good ones <laughs> yes wow man because transmutation sucked necromancy was meh um uh what were the other two school or other i i, I found a school. uh i found an article that uh, I'll, I'll probably link to this article it's got all the list of the yeah, characters no, that honestly stuff. explains it, more is that the ones that everyone picked were the ones that were good <laughs> That makes yeah. more sense to me then. Oh yeah, no, I, 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 I just I thought about actually looking at this here because I'd seen I'd found this uh, when I was looking for news and stuff like that for stuff that um, someone had the JPEG of the uh, th this was information that's been provided. You know, this image from I forget who yeah. sent it originally, but you know, I knew that some people were talking about the full list here. Um, figure out what the illusionist did. I don't know so, how to change it, but I feel like that was one that was okay. Uh, this is a mixture of stuff from the original player's handbook, some stuff that's been reworked from the original yeah. player's handbook, some stuff from Tasha's, and three new subclasses. Just three. Uh, the World Tree Barbarian, oh, yeah, College yeah. of Dance Bard, and I can't remember the last one off the top of my head. Um, yeah, Conjuration... It is kind of I trash. I don't remember the third new one. I just know it's the one is the barbarian and the bard. Um, and, oh, enchantment. That's the last one. That one was also honestly that one wasn't horrible. But yeah, um, I'm trying to remember. Illusion was 
I mean, like, again, it's the cleric's domains are down to four, also. Yeah. And I'm not saying you couldn't reintroduce a bunch of these in the future, they but again, like, it's one of... will. Like, it, well, that's one thing, is, like, then how do you reintroduce them on Wizards when they're supposed to be, like, what, nine schools? Are you gonna have uh, five more in the yeah, I, thought was, I thought there were eight schools. Eight schools? If eight schools? It might be eight. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Yeah, eight schools. Oh, eight schools. It was eight schools, you're right. Sorry. You, yeah, you can uh, introduce four more in the book and not have four more of anything else? I don't know. Same with cleric and domains, because those are things that are very... <sighs> intrinsic to those two types of classes that make them very different, is that they have these things that are very much tied to, like, for cleric, they're deities. For wizards, the different schools of magic. You know... There, there, there always were more options on those ones for specific reasons. I don't know. They might introduce in the future. If yep. it's, okay, yeah. it's not yeah. a huge so, thing, yeah. you so know. Those are the I three think best one. I, I, I just skimmed through it. Yeah, those are the three. Those are the four best ones. That's why people pick them. <laughs> yeah. Again, welcome, happy Friday. So, okay. Saturday. Close yeah, so that's 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 why they pick those four. If that's how they did it, yeah, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> when you told me the ones, I'm like, wait, no, that's why, because those are the ones I know are the best, because those are the ones you pick. Because <laughs> I like wizards, I play them sometimes. Yeah. So I've looked them over a lot. That and Warcaster are very fun. Order of Scribes is interesting. I like it. Um, I'm playing one right now. Um, gonna play it tomorrow. It's fun. Yep. I like I like Order of Scribes as well. I think that one's pretty good. I'm trying to remember what else there is. Oh yeah, Blade Dancer could use a buff, honestly. Um, I mean, a lot of these could have used buffs. Um, we generally know some of the stuff that's going on with now Barbarian, Paladin, and Fight. We have had updates with those. Yes. Um, but uh, is there anything else? Uh, there's technically new spells. There's the Weapon Mastery, which is an interesting idea. Um, you know... Uh, anything else major? A lot of artwork. No. If, if you watch the video, they yeah. talk a lot about their artwork for a long time. Uh, I do like how they tried to keep all of, like, basically, uh, about, I found it amusing how they said they were going to keep a balance of all of the races. So, like, um, everything has, like, everything's equally, every, or sorry, species. Every yeah, species, species is equally represented. Well, that's fine. In terminology. I, I, yeah, I, I, don't... I like that because, uh, it's funny because I do feel like in the original book, you get a lot of humans, a lot of elves, and then, surprisingly, I feel like a lot of dragonborn, <laughs> and then a few a few tiefling. Uh, it's like, I feel like those are the ones they focused on for whatever reason. I remember the old book. So, oh god, I just, I'm looking at this article, and the amount of times in all these videos, they're like, pre-order today! And I'm like, no! I like that. Yeah, no, I, well, here's the thing. I don't want to pre-order them because I actually want to get the ones from the game shop because I actually like the alternate art. <laughs> so I actually might go in person and get them. I think it's also the thing of, like, there, you don't get anything for the pre-orders, so why? Yeah, 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 there's no reason to. Yeah, a lot of humans and elves and, like, tieflings. Less Dragonborn than I originally thought, actually. Um... Oh, a Circle of the Sea Druid was the other the, the other new one. Those are the only three new ones. The Path of the World Tree Barbarian, College of Dance Bard, Circle of Sea Druid. Uh, College of Dance Bard was fine. It was just okay. It was basically like a monk. If we go by the um, Utter of Arcana, which you could have changed, you know, could have changed from there. Yeah. Same with Circle I of mean, the Sea. It was fine. N neither, none of them were so great, you know, that they were outside. But again, maybe it didn't even that. A little bit. Um, bu, 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 bu. Okay, let's talk about let's 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 let's, let's I guess hit the one that is the. Oh yeah, they have some. Oh yeah, Psy Warrior. Is that is that one new? No, it was in Tasha's. Got it. I I did not buy Tasha's, so in part yes. because I know they uh, like by the time I got her, I was poor at that time. By the time I got money, twenty twenty four was announced. I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah, uh, a bunch of stuff was reprinted from Tasha's. Basically, the new book is. Um, some rules updates and then stuff from Tasha's the player's handbook. Again, it's yep. one of those things that I'm gonna say this here. It is sixty dollars a piece for any of these things. It's expensive. 
So think about if it's worth no, like, it for it's, you. It's it, as weird as it may sound. Like the only one I would encourage people to buy is the DMG. The other things just get offline. <laughs> like they're going to be free eventually. <laughs> the information is going to be up there, and like the updates yeah. for the player's handbook. They're and just thankfully basically. Wizards isn't a tyrant and doesn't destroy everyone who puts their stuff up. Only if they make it, uh, like soup. Only if they're like a big company who sells stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things that there are plenty of interesting things that have been put into the player's handbook as far as we've heard. But most of those you can just play the take these new rules and play it with your old books. You know, with slightly yeah. updates or something and find it online. It, it's. It's unfortunate that because, uh, you know, I have the Player's Handbook and I have Tasha's, it, is it enough for me to feel like I need to spend $60 for an update that only provides a little bit of new stuff from those? I don't know. Yeah, I, found it, I found it weird how much they focused on the Bastion thing. I'm like, that's literally going to be used by, like, three people. <laughs> <laughs> they did I talk mean, about okay, that. It's, yeah, it's... it's it's useful for long campaigns for GMs who want to like have a base of operations in their system, which granted is very Greyhawk. Uh, Greyhawk is very base of operations. I mean, that's kind of, I think why it's like small settlements with lots of wilderness. So you have big things. So it kind of makes sense if you're doing Greyhawk, but um, I just found it weird how much to focus on that. It's like a big thing that your every GM is going to want to do. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess let's talk about the fighter. I'll link the fighter thing here uh, for people to see. This is the fighter article. They did an entire video about it. Uh, um, so. I, the videos. Uh, I didn't notice that there were arc. Oh, yeah, okay. That is the fighter link. Um, oh, you only get... You get a fight. The, the, again, like, it's... A lot of... I think it's more of them for fighter. Most people will get one weapon mastery that they can change no, I, at I, a long rest, you know? Yeah. Oh, I see. You get three that you can change at a long rest. Right. Yeah. I remember how this works now. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically you can have three weapons actively used, whereas everyone else can only have one, which isn't yeah. a big deal. Um, but it's kind of nice, because that means you have to, like, okay, uh, it means that there's someone, like, basically martial classes can have a bow and a sword, and then maybe, you know, like, I mean, something I do in Solasto that I'm playing on my channel right now is I have my fighter who has a sword and board, uh, a two-handed, and, well, I'd like to have a range, but anyway, but, like, you can do three things, so it's like you can go defense, damage, and ranged, you know, if you need to. Um, so I can see that being very useful. Uh, they have... Do they have... They have second wind now? I don't see... Um, what's it called for fighter anymore? Um, uh, Action search? Action search, yeah. Um... um. Battlemaster Champion. Oh, yeah, and everyone's getting it level 3 now, so um, that means that even, uh, like, wizards don't get their uh, class into level 3. It's such a weird thing for certain classes. I feel like it's it really should just be a level 1 thing. Mm -hmm. it, okay, here, here was another issue when it, when it came to discussing things. It sounded a lot like they just want people to start at level 3 a lot more. They because did. you make the major choice. You know, skip yeah. out level 1 and 2 a lot more. Which they, they like, well, they did say uh, most experienced people will probably want to start at level 3 now. Again, it's like, I like starting at level 1, but like, I don't... Care I, don't way. <laughs> I know. It's, just, it, it's, it's, a, it's a little thing, but it is just like a little bit of that tweaky, annoying thing in the back of my mind. A little bit. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we've got Second Wind, which Second Wind apparently is a resource now, too, because you can use it on something yeah. like Pactful Mine. Um, and okay, so you'll probably have a certain number of uses of Second Wind, which is nice, honestly. That's actually something I hate about fighters, is that Second Wind is basically worthless. It's, like, such a small amount of HP. Yeah, no. And, uh, Pactful Mine, Pactful Shift using it with kind of things for bonus acts and stuff isn't terrible, you know? 
Yeah. Um, um, it's kind of interesting that they did get rid of Action Surge, which, however, uh, let's see. Yeah, they got rid of Action Surge. Um, so the one thing about Action Surge, actually, um, Fighting Styles, second win? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Fighting Styles are now also feats that just get a Fighting Style feat, I guess. Yes. I forgot that they were going to do that where you get, um, yeah, so basically it'll be like you can pick a feat that is a fighting style, um, which uh, is fine. Um, so yeah, they still get their fighting styles. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I think I like the idea of them not having action surge anymore because I like the idea of, they might actually put this in. Um, so this was something in 4E where everyone got an action surge, which they got like once per basically long rest. They haven't talked about it, but I would agree that that would be pretty cool. But I feel like fighters never felt overly powerful. I'm just curious if how this balances out with their other abilities. I agree. Um, and I assume they're going to get... Uh, let's see. Because basically, here's the thing. Like, I think... Wait, do they not get... They didn't mention multiple attacks on here, did they? Um, they haven't molded, they haven't mentioned that. We, they, we don't. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens with that. It I mean, could there, be no longer tied to specifically a class and might just be a level thing. Possibly. And we don't know. And there might be some stuff that they haven't revealed. Again, um, I haven't seen the full video on this. I've heard some discussion of it, so I could have missed that. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't watch the video either. I didn't watch any of the videos about the classes. I probably will. Honestly. I saw some people discussing each of them, each of the days. Uh, I saw some stuff talking about it, but I didn't go into depth with the, some of them. And I, I missed some of some of them, too. Um, so, yeah, but um, basically, yeah. So I think that... Because that's the other thing, too, is fighters got a lot more ability score improvements and feats. It sounds like they're doing away with that. Um, yeah... Again. Uh, um... Which, um, I think it's fine. I mean, that's the thing. is It sounds like they're going to make ability score improvements and feats. I would love it if they made ability score improvements and feats separate. I actually think it's really annoying they have to pick and choose in 5e. Um, okay, we know there's going to be uh, extra attacks because we do know you get two extra attacks at level 11 on when you look under the Eldritch Knight. We don't know how Got it's it. going to be. But uh, basically, they changed how it is. Instead of getting a bonus action attack when you cast a cantrip, now they basically allow you to cast a cantrip, replacing one of your normal attacks. That's fine. Yes. That's a little bit of improvement. Not a super big one. Um, uh, actually, that's a very big improvement. Um, more than you think, because um, they do more damage than normal attacks. Cantrips. I don't know how... Yeah. Well, cantrips definitely do more damage, so, so well, I think again, it's a different stat to attack then, so it's like balance and having the two stats usually. Uh, yes, unless you make a mage blaster, which I wanted to do, but it's not the best because you can still only get one attack. But if they do that, it's something I thought about. In fact, wait, and, oh, just like it, and then apparently their improved war magic allows them to go two attacks to cast a first or second level spell. Which is pretty extra powerful too. So, yeah. Eldritch Knight, a little bit buff. Um, Psy Warriors unchanged from Pasha's Cauldron of Everything. Um, because I think they did get the they uh, fighters do get the ability to do oh, one of their attacks. It's just later. I did forget to mention something that they changed that was new. Heroic Inspiration. Got to mention that. Because the champion can get heroic inspiration. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's what it was. Hold on. Sorry. I just want to say, um, yeah. So what it was for Eldritch Knights in the past was uh, when you make a... Um, when you do a cantrip, you can then do a bonus action attack. So yeah. that's, all, that's all they got before. But now it's that you replace one of your attacks with a cantrip, which is really good. And the same could be said for, like, improved war magic was you cast first level spell, bonus action attack. Now it's... Uh, full attack, I can forgo two of my attacks to cast a first or second level spell. 
Meaning at higher levels, yeah. you can get more attacks and still. Yeah, it is a boost. Um, the champion, Sorry, <laughs> Heroic Inspiration. They, they changed Inspiration. Now it's basically a reroll. It's reroll on anything. It could be reroll on damage. Any dice roll. Yeah. Is your Inspiration now. So it's actually something you can use now. And champions get Heroic Inspiration if you don't start turn with it at 10th level. Um... Battlemaster um, has been basically pretty much the same with superiority dice. Um, they yeah, made know your sense. enemy not Latin require a minute. That's, th that's kind of like common sense. Ah, this ability requires a minute to use that are totally going to use against our enemies in battle. Oh, wait, Battlemaster was know your enemy? Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, the, they change to know your enemy, which removes the one-minute observation condition, but it reveals only immunities, resistance, and vulnerabilities, which is fine. That's not that's what a, that's you a, want. That's yeah, it's what you, you want. want. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's what you want. And fucking spending a minute for, like, I guess that and more information, that's fine. I'd rather spend, like, a round and get that information for, like, you know, and be like, Wizard, use fire on it! <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't yeah, know I'm doing, like, Arnold. <laughs> I mean, but, fighter makes sense. <laughs> yeah. More barbarians, um, we'll get to it, but... Okay, so yeah, they're just not showing everything, because they mention, uh, you know, Indomitable, add fighter levels to rerolls made with Indomitable, but they're not saying that you get Indomitable earlier on. So yeah, they're, they're basically leaving stuff out, they're just giving an overview of some of the major changes. And again, it's it's mostly the same as I think what this. I think that's the big part about looking at this already. It's a lot the same. And I think that's the other thing that makes you think about that $6 price point. It's a lot the same. No, if it's yeah. worth it. It could be for you. Think about it. And, you honestly, know, wait it, for reviews. Wait for reviews. Yeah, I do like the... Go for Honestly, I... Yeah, I agree. I'd love playing Eldritch tonight. I've always wanted to, but they've... Honestly, I've just felt like they've sucked. So, and I never have. This I might make them wizard. more reasonable with the attack kind yeah. of thing. That's that... In fact, other, I, yeah. That's I've been more tempted to play a Blade Singer than a uh, Eldritch mm. Knight. Let's put it that way. Okay, so... Especially because rules is written, you can only do abjuration and evocation, which are... Evocation is actually not what you want as a fighter. See, this this sounds weird, but you don't want... You, you want your damage to be your sword, not your brain. So... Okay. That's what the fighter is. They get all that stuff anyway. Anyway. Let's talk about Barbarian then. You know? Okay. That's the, that's the next one they talk about in videos. Mm -hmm. Um, So... The big thing about Barbarian, which is both... We still have some changes, which are... To their rage, which are actually... Yeah, so they they buffed two. it, and they've also made it worse. Buff was... Um, you can only you can spend a bonus action to maintain it, rather than, you know, do something strength rise or hit someone, you know. Which is uh -huh. a pretty decent thing, you know, you can maintain your rage. Um... You now, which I guess you did it before, um, you now lose it if you go incapacitated, and there's a lot more ways to incapacitate you if you look at the, uh, you, you did before. You lost it before. Did you lose it before? What was it, um... I was, really should um, not be putting this book down. Okay. Um, 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 I know for a fact, because it happened, I, I know that was a big issue. And oh, knocked unconscious. Very... No, no, it was knocked unconscious incapacitated now affects it, not unconscious. Incapacitated is some status ailments. Yes, I know that. Um... So I think more stuff ends your rage is what I think it, it, what it changes you. Or more stuff allows your rage to end. It was just unconscious before. Oh, oh, no, I know why. Sorry. The reason I consider incapacitated um, dead anyway is because you can't... Uh, normally you can Okay, this is why. So they kind of kept it similar uh, in that sense because in the past, if you were incapacitated, you couldn't attack someone. Yeah. So if you were like... Yeah, so if you were like trapped... So, uh, but this is actually better because it means you can actually maintain during things like paralyzed, which you, again, still couldn't before. So you can't only, actually. Oh, they said... Incapacitated ends your rage. Oh, inca you're right. Paralyzed has incapacitated, I think, is part of it. So it's sort of like... like If you're unconscious, 
yeah. you're not worrying about your rage anyway. You know, that by right, the time so you're it, reaching that point in time, it's a lot of yeah. like the, yeah, Okay, really? so the idea is you can still end a rage through things like hold person. Um this doesn't bother me as much as once I realized what they did. It's just you can still end a rage through something like hold person <laughs> because they'll be incapacitated. Okay. So that's what you're saying that well well that's the thing is hold person wouldn't end a rage before. It would, because you would... Here's the thing. You wouldn't be able to attack on your turn because you couldn't do anything. What so I'm saying it. is, it would and wouldn't. Because if I hit you with that, then you instantly now end your rage. If I hit you with it before, one of my allies has a possibility of saving me from it so I can maintain my rage. Technically, also, if someone hits you and gets the critical out of a... Uh out of a hold person, then you would still be able to continue raging. Um, so there, yeah, I, I, it's very similar though. Like that's the thing is incapacitated really is a rage ender. If you play it rules as written. Um, I know that it, much. It's like, it's, it's still definitely a thing that opens up a lot more abilities to ending it. I think directly. Well, let, me, let me check the rage again. Cause I, 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 Someone was talking about this. They also, I don't know they enough also about may it. have changed. They also may have changed the wording for incapacitated. That's another thing. They did say they changed some of the conditions. Again, incapacitated it's, now may be the. You have an attack the attacked a hostile creature since your last turn, or taken damage since then. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So that's, well, that's why again, incapacitated is fairly. Because incapacitated, you can't take actions or reactions. Um, actually, if they, yeah, yeah, because basically, check. so you can't attack. There was there basically, was a you bunch can't of actively maintain your rage. There was a bunch In of theory. stuff that does a lot more incapacitation, is what I think it is. It's like there's some stunning stuff which does incapacitation. Yeah, it. Yeah, if the if there's because they do have like the weapon attacks. So if the weapon attacks can do an incapacitation effect, that could still be problematic. I think it's the fact that there it, it opened up that's a lot easier to end a rage. Is it is it very very easy? No, it is still easier to end a barbarian's rage, Honestly, which is my, weird my because they made it better. The same. <laughs> Again, I think it's it is weird. I would actually kind of agree that they made it easier to maintain the rage, but also easier to end the rage. So I yeah, don't so know. I I I personally think I the, bo the bonus action to extend I it is kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's better, especially... No, I actually think it's better because um, they also made it so it lasts 10 minutes, right? You can do it up to I 10 minutes? I think so. Yeah. I remember that somewhere. Uh, which means you can basically get it on the dungeon. So, so basically, the idea is if your rage is ended by an effect, you can then just reactivate it and use another use. But if you're basically not getting incapacitated, you're going to basically be able to rage for a whole dungeon. Hmm. So it's kind of like this give and take. They had to make it almost easier to end because otherwise it would just never end. I heard someone that plays Barbarians talking about it and they saw it as a more debuff than bonus as someone that plays Barbarians. I don't play That's Barbarians fair. very much. You know, I think I've maybe played a Barbarian once and not for very long. So I don't know enough about playing one in 5e to uh, know I mean, how to feel like this. So I don't think I've played a Barbarian. But I have, I do know how they work, and I've always seen them as actually not really useful because you get hit a lot. Because the whole idea of a barbarian is you have low AC and high health, but generally that doesn't mean shit <laughs> because uh, you, you also take half damage. So the idea is you have a lot of health and you take half damage. So in theory, you should just take a lot of chip damage. But wow. the issue is, is most things don't do bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. <laughs> So you tend to yeah. take full damage. Well, that's because, where... And then like, you just die. Yeah. Well, that's where, hey, it was really great when we were Path of the Wild Heart, which is now was formerly put Totem Warrior, and no longer you have that damage reduction. Yeah, so, you have to pick now. Yeah. Uh, and yes, that, that, that's why it was the most broken. I actually think it was I do, broken. I do agree. Before. That it was broken and needed some kind of balancing. I don't know if it's one of those weird things. It's like it's a, it's a hard thing to say. Is 
did they where where they took things too far on, on nerfing that one. But that was definitely one that is, the Path of Wild Heart, Heart is definitely weaker. Um, let's yeah, see I here. mean, I think I think the uh, Barbarian is going to be very much how how common is incapacitated. That's going to be the big thing for that. Um, for the rage, because if they I, made it super common, then that's going to be really obnoxious. Yeah, I think there was like a, a handful of abilities I kind of heard about, like that. Um, because the thing is, I think it's like it's that weird thing that incapacitated doesn't mean like you can't do things. Sometimes I don't know. It's sometimes weird. It depends um, on what they did to incapacitate. Like, incapa if incapacitated we, rules is written, um, we need to see more. We need to yeah. see. So. They did have a bunch of like like status ailments in one of the the things. I'd have to like look up a link to the. Um... It also oh, doesn't gosh. say here. Also, it doesn't say here that it's in this thing that it's incapacitated. Did they say it in the video? I don't know if they still said it in the video or if that's go just going by their last unarthur con. Yeah, they the may they con may con have changed that, it so they... again. Yeah, they, so they may have changed it again. I don't. It, the, I don't know if they've mentioned it or not. That's the thing is, I'm only looking at the article right now, and I have to remember what they were talking about, and they were complaining, and the person was complaining about that. So the person was complaining about the rage and the incapacitation stuff, you know, as someone that has yeah. a barbarian character that used a bunch. Yep. Um, so, again, it could just be like, you know, we're going off of that. Um, so yeah, Pad Wildheart. Big, big kind of nerf there. I don't know. We will have to see if it's rebalanced. Their Path of World Tree was fine. Uh, oh, I don't think of Pounce is nice. Allows you to move. Basically, you can move half your speed as a rage and then move and then attack. That's pretty so good. So you can actually get into things better. Um, I um, assume. Yeah. I think Brutal yeah, Strike thing. is a little bit better. Was that the. Didn't you get like earlier levels? Oh no, they don't, um, they don't have that anymore. Okay. Yeah, um... Yeah, they don't have the... Like, that's the ninth level, and wasn't Brutal Strike at early levels, so and that's the one where you can get, give your, get advantage and everybody has dis... And, and you have no, advantage and they reckless, all have advantage. That was, that was Reckless Attack. Oh, brutal brutal Strike? Still, brutal Strike, I think, used to be Brutal Critical. Or, oh, it was Brutal Critical. They changed it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they, um, they, it's, no strike, longer, uh, it's no longer just a uh, critical thing. You can forgo advantage on one of your strength-based attacks in exchange for more damage, or select from debuffs to impose your enemies. Advantage would be gained from Reckless Attack, which they still have, I guess, then. Or by enabling an attack of prone enemy. They don't mention Wait. it, probably, because it's, it it's probably not oh. changed, I'm assuming. Wait, they made, they made it sound like you get advantage on all your attacks. Oh, no. The advantage you gain through reckless attack, or it could be enabled by attacking a prone enemy. Or... Oh, the yeah, only so condition is that you can't you can have disadvantage on the roll as well. That makes sense. Yep. Um, you, can knock, you can do an extra 1d10 points of damage. Uh, force blower hamstring. This is... Yeah, brutal, brutal... Okay, Brutal Critical fairly, is fairly really underwhelming, though. I know. That's what the thing is. Brutal Critical is fairly underwhelming. This also feels just about as underwhelming, because, again, like... Forgoing Advantage, which is one of those main things you use Reckless for in the first place, is kind of like... Well, yeah... Um, and you're rolling 2d20, oh, then, love... which you're increasing your critical chance, but then it's extra damage or doing special effects. Oh, I, no, I love these. I love these. Okay. Um, no, uh, sorry... This is something that if you do theater of the mind, you uh, so I I love tactical stuff. I love mm. battle maps. Yeah. The it is so limited the ability to move things in five e. The idea mm. that you can move someone is so nice, like or or reduce their movement and stuff. Like movement stuff is so overlooked in five e. Probably because they didn't expect it to be tactical. They wanted it to be more narrative, which mm. is fine. And yes, this kind of thing is problematic but like honestly like the idea of forceful blow especially of really tactical maps you can like basically knock someone off a ledge uh and then you can take they take fall damage plus the extra damage it's like you can do a lot of damage or something like that plus you can just move them away from a uh, uh a wizard and then uh potentially your next shot because uh, if you have multiple attacks you can potentially do both i think um i think the only thing that makes the brutal strike better than brutal critical is the fact you can have these options of special attacks well yeah 
but also you just get extra damage as well. So you do an extra. You, you forgo. Damage. You can. Oh, you can do one extra damage and choose either one of the two. Yep. Oh. Yep. Okay. Still an extra d10 damage. Decent. Mm. It, again, foregoing advantage for this is one of those big things that's kind of like advantage okay, can be very so helpful. I always view barbarian as high risk, high reward. You you take a lot of damage, but you deal a lot of damage. You yeah. Uh, um, yeah, you, you uh, attack, you, you're more likely to attack, but you're more likely to get hit, you know? So it's, it's just like, honestly, this is totally fair to me. I do think I, what I'm saying is, I think it's fine. I think it's, is it better than Brutal Critical? Yes. Oh, is wait. it super better than Seeing Brutal Critical? Seeing as how you don't lose your rage until you get incapacitated, you effectively have twice as many hit points, think to, I think it's still incapacitated. They mention it in Relentless Rage. That ah. You get. So. Yep, there they do. They mention the word incapacitated right there. Yeah, so it depends on what they did to incapacitated. Um. D&D 2024. I'm going to see incapacitated. Um. Well. It was in the list of stuff from before, but this is the old stuff. You can pass it, you just can't take actions or reactions. And I think... Oh, okay. The question... Relent Relentless Rage is nice. That actually makes them... That actually helps. Because you expect to have a high constitution, and the fact that you just need to, like, keep making a constitution save. Um... Yeah, I think, I think Relentless Rage, by the time you get to the 11th level, you're beginning to, like, you know... Uh, get better. Well, the thing is, it used to be, but the thing is, you have to be 15th level before unconscious is the only thing that makes you angry or rage. Which used to be at first level. Yes. And whatever. I think Barbarian is... I, I think it's fine. I, I actually kind of want to play this. Like, that's the thing. This makes me want to play a Barbarian. Before, I was just like, oh, this is trash. <laughs> Like, the thing is, on as paper, someone, it looked okay, I but think then when you really do, think about it, it's bad. I, I haven't done it for long, but I do recall building up a Barbarian once and playing a little bit of it. I didn't really get far into it. You know, it wasn't like a big campaign. I can tell you, it feels very the same. A little bit of tweaks here and there. Things like the uh, Brutal Strike being better, cool. Things like the Instinctive Pounce sound very neat. So there's little bits of things here and there. It doesn't feel massively different, though. You know, that, oh, I think I that's the thing. Agree. I agree. I think they fit. Honestly, in my opinion, they upgraded some of the things that needed upgrading, and left a little bit the same, which is <sighs> fine. I think it's sort of like rage. I don't know which is better. Um, that'll be. It. We'll have to look at that and see how what things are. Especially as you're saying, the incapacitated stuff. That like might make a difference. If there's a yeah, lot they more make it easier to lose rage, but then they made, like, ten times more thing. Like, if they made it, like, ten times easier to lose rage because everything doesn't... This is the thing. I'm, like, thinking, there's not a lot that incapacitates you right now. They might have also... Here's the thing. It depends. Did they did they leave out chaining? Because a lot of the conditions are you do this, but this also gives you this. Like, um... Paralyzed makes you incapacitated. Uh, I think there's more stuff that can stun you. you. Incapacitated. Stunned but makes you incapacitated. Unconscious makes you incapacitated. That unless, makes sense. Unless they, yeah. Unless they, uh, yeah. Where's stunned? Petrified makes you incapacitated. Yeah. It makes sense. Paralyzed yeah. makes you incapacitated. It makes sense. Grappled. Uh, grappled yeah. just stunned, ends this. Stunned, stunned is the bad one. Stunned is the one that's really bad. And stunned, I. There are plenty of things that do stun. Not a huge amount yeah. of them, but there are enough. But I think stunned is the one that you really have to worry about. Well, they also increase the amount of stuff. Yeah, so stunned is the one that's bad. That can end your yeah. rage. They may, though, have made incapacitated separate from stunned. Stunned might be different now. So that's I like, think it know. wasn't it as of the... Um, on our play test. The playtest. So it, was, it wasn't as a playtest. They could have in the final release. So we do have to look at the yeah. final release. But as of the playtest, yeah. they have. We don't. They have made changes since the playtest. We do know that. You know, 
Um, yeah, okay. So Restrained was the one I was worried about. Yeah, Restrained does not incapacitate you, which is good. I do think both Fighter and Barbarian have been tweaked in good ways, but I don't think they're, like, very different from what they were. I think they're good tweaks. I think they are quality of life tweaks. They're interesting tweaks. But I feel like they are very much samey in a lot of ways, except for, like, I guess for Barbarian, the, um... Path of Wildheart. I haven't seen the final version of that to see how well that goes. Same with Path of Berserker. Also... Yeah. I think it's an improvement for the most part, personally. I, I can't... I kind of agree that it is a little bit of an improvement. I just don't know how big of an improvement it is. That kind of thing, you know. It's sort of like... I mean, this this actually makes me want to play a Barbarian. That's the thing. I, and I so which makes me consider that an improvement. Paladin I'm a lot more worried about because I know they got <sighs> actually more nerfed than buffed. So, so... Okay, so here's the thing that I'm going to say here about this. And, um... Paladin Smite is the largest nerf there is. Can you link by it? By far. I'll link the Paladin thing. And I will... Let's talk about that for a second, as to why it is a super nerf. And I'm, I, I, I won't disagree... Paladins could be very busted with the way that their smites work. Oh, they were broken. I'm not even going to, like, they were but so But they broken. have been nuked into the ground with this, is what I'm saying. The smite, <laughs> Divine Smite is a spell. Okay. Yes. That means things that resist spells in magic is now effect buff. That's the first thing you have to think about. It, yes. Divine Smite, you didn't have to worry about magic immunities and stuff before. Yes. Is a bonus action. But magic immunity in 5e is just half damage, which isn't, like, the end of the world. <laughs> Still, half damage from your Paladin Smite, which is supposed to be a big attack and do a lot of damage, is Still a lot. do a lot of damage. <laughs> it's still a big hit. Yeah, but you can only get to be one fair, now a turn. Yeah, and I was only to say, on to your... be fair, though, yeah, to be fair, you can't just do, like, six of them, so... <laughs> you can't do it on attack of opportunity, you can't do it on anything else, and it's, it's your bonus action, which means... No, it's a bonus action. No, I'm saying, could you do it before on Attack of Opportunity? Yes. I guess you could. Yep. As long as you had... Because you last before, you'd use your um, spell slots. That's what you That's what you used it for. Mm -hmm. you, fu you fueled it for. The other thing is, all the other smite spells will never be used again. Why? Because they all suck in comparison to Divine Smite. All hey, of them usually do spell. no extra damage. The Smite spells? Just go look in the normal player's handbook under all the Smite spells. Or look under Paladin's No, I list. know about those. I'm just, like, trying to see where the new ones are. Um, the Divine Smite? It's... We'd have to... It was in the last thing that talked about the Paladin had spells, had the Divine Smite spell, which it still is a spell. Okay. But I don't like, yeah. and we know it's still a bonus action to cast it, you know. Oh, they already, they always have it prepared. Great. I think it's the thing that like, I don't think there. It, man, it's just a this is a tough thing because I feel like I definitely can see how this has made it that paladins, which is good in a way are not going to be the... There's so many multi-class paladins that use Divine Smite. I'm not going to lie. They it were was so the... broken before. Like, honestly, they literally... I, I don't know. In my opinion, they like were so brokenly good that they were not fun to play with because they just destroyed everything. I never got that from playing with the paladins. That's the thing is. They were never... Like, I play with some pretty busted builds that use that kind of stuff, but they usually were like three classes to combine with that kind of thing. Which is kind of ridiculous. A straight-up paladin, paladin alone. Paladin alone I've played paladin it. Alone. It doesn't. It's not that great. It's good, but it's not that great. You can just hammer monsters into the ground so hard with it. It's like the, you have so make? few spell slots, and all of them are like two d six or more dam, like two d six or more damage. Yeah, I'm sorry. It is powerful. But the fact is, fair, you just have so many like, limited spell slots. Like, I, I saw that's played a Paladin for, like, I mean, a number of months. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Like, I played, okay, I played with a Paladin one time, and mm. I felt like they just did 
all the damage. Um, and like could you could not compare build. even as a. Which no, they just, did a they just did a paladin. <laughs> I know it was just a solid paladin. Um, and they did. They just did so much damage that it was all like, okay, I um, magic missile. No. Um, and uh, to be fair, this was lower level, and I think that's where they actually break the most. Is at the lower levels. Um, Let, let's say, okay, a third level paladin would have three divine. Well, they could um, when they when when they normally hit, um, they have to use a spell slot to divine smite. So it's a, it is a spell use kind of in a way. Uh, yeah. The first level one does two d eight extra damage. Yeah, two and two d eight, which is powerful for a first level spell. But at third level, they don't three of those per day. Um, let's look at fifth level, which they have six, and two of them would be three d8s. But they're second level spells. At that level, a wizard can know fireball. Fireball is okay. So this is the best single target damage in the game. That's the thing. Oh, I'm not saying it's not the best single target damage in the game. It really is. But, like, 86 uh, fireball for, like, a, a spell slot, yeah. But they do have a limited number of them that they don't get back on a short rest. And there are people think, that get things back on a short rest, too. You know why I think I actually felt very insignificant? is because in mm. that game I was playing a rogue. You still would have been doing 3d6 damage, though, on sneak attack. Yeah, but the paladin was still like, like the paladin attacks it's, twice. You can do like three at three fifth level attacking twice, each doing an extra two d eight. That is very powerful. But I'm going to tell you this here too. That's using up all your resources very quick. I think that's the thing is if you were playing a game, you got maybe one attack of battle per long rest. I then, mean, yeah, yeah. The the game didn't have a lot of fights. That's that's why it was. Like, so yeah, the, the character was able to burn it fully. Yeah, they could just burn all of their abilities and do a lot of damage. And I'm gonna tell you, yeah. that's that's unusual, but that would be a, a situation where that would really go home. I'm gonna tell yeah. you, yeah, a paladin. It's I'm not gonna argue that's not powerful the divine smite ability and can be abused in a lot of ways because a lot of more abusive builds, not all of them, because I've heard of plenty that don't use it, use yep. the paladin as divine smite. Well, those are usually multi-class builds that use yes. it and abuse it. Yeah, it's I mean, a like just a rogue, paladin. A, a rogue paladin. <laughs> oh god, yeah. But but again, a just pure paladin, I don't think is had would have been that strong overall. Because again, it's you said limited number of spell slots, and you have to use them per day. You don't get them back. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean that game I was think I'm thinking about had very much a five minute uh, you know a five minute adventuring day kind of thing. We basically did one fight and then we like moved on because it was um it was basically a homebrewed spelljammer thing. So it was kind of just like mm. you did one fight and then you moved on. Um, yeah, it was before the spelljammer book came out, but he did like a spelljammer thing. Um, yeah, but I I just remember I'm like I'm like man, like it's not like it wasn't like I had no fun. I still had a lot of fun, but it was just like, man, as far as damage goes, I as the rogue am not the best single target damage dealer, which I felt problematic. I think it's the thing that, like, um, the, the rogue can, is so much better as soon as you get to, like, two or three battles before long rest. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing is, which and you're, you're fighting, normally, and you're finding, yeah, and you're fighting a lot more like creatures instead of just one creature, because you can yeah. repeatedly sneak attack. And I think that's yep. where the rogue really comes into shot. And I'm saying like, yeah, I think that was a situation where definitely you could have seen how yeah. divine smite could be abused. But I mean, my thought is divine smite is I. That's why I think it's better because it just limits it basically to one per rest or one per attack or one per turn. Which but the thing is, reduces the damage, the but doesn't reduce your overall damage, it just reduces your... It does the same amount of damage, probably. But one yes. per round... <sighs> it means that... And also, not you can't use it on like things like Tax of Opportunity. I can... Um, 
I think the thing is... You can't use sneak attack on attack assault opportunity. I think that the, it's one of those things is... Paladins, minus their okay. Divine Smite, don't do a lot. They're supposed to be a jack of all trades. That's, that's the thing about them, that they should... They're, they're, they're support, tank, and... Uh, they're damage technically deal. a worse fighter overall. If you take a look at it. They do get some fighting styles, they get some weapon masteries, they get some spells, they can find a steed, which is whatever. I think they have a lot, like, I mean, they have a lot going for them. They got some um, auras that protect them. Um, the auras are nice. I, I don't know if they changed those, but they were nice before. They weren't, like, uh, they were really uh, good in terror. It's protecting against fight, right. Both of them protect against fright. That's it. Yes, but then, then the aura did something different depending on your uh, oath. Then oaths might be that that might be big things. The oath changes might make some differences. Yes, I think they are. Their oaths make things for different ones. But that's not yeah, oaths are separate. I'm gonna tell you, oaths are, oath are, oath are separate. That's you know subclass yep. features. Everybody's got oh, subclass wait. features. They made faithful. Okay, that's weird. That I I just noticed they made fade, faithful steed a class ability. What? <laughs> yeah. Um. Um, play on hands is bonus action is oh. good. I'll pick that. You know. Okay, so they made it better. They made their this the otherworldly steed will be much better suited for combat, and can even regain hit yes. point when you're. Yes, it's a much better combat. spell. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, that is it is a much better spell. The fine steed actually makes something that could actually be useful. Um, um, divinity. Again, I I I don't find this as an overall. I, I I think it's a nerf. I agree. I don't think it's nerfed to the ground. Again, I think like it makes a lot of it's it's the, it's the catch twenty two. It makes a lot of like the very powerful builds not useful. Anymore. Okay, that's fine. But it also, <coughs> generally speaking, I think does make paladins less good because like. I mean, I, I I agree. They were they were, in my opinion, way too good as a solo class. Like no 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 no, no. Builds they were way too good though as someone that's playing one as a solo class. I was never way too good. I'm playing one now and I'm not that good. I'm playing one in a in a game on Mondays. I'm a paladin. I, I I'm really kind of awful. Okay, uh, so... Actually, I'm an Order of Redemption, which is kind of an awful Paladin class to begin with, which I understand, but I do use my smites on something, and it does some damage, but it's nothing matched to any of the other characters. You're also doing, like, say. Lightning or Momo's game, right? No, that's, uh, River's game. Oh, uh, River's we're, game. We're, does, we're he doing... do, does he do tougher combats? We've had some pretty tough combats, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. and I've been... It's been a mixed bag. There's definitely been some tough combats, and... <coughs> It's a problem. I have had the full gambit because I'm a goddamn Order of Redemption paladin, so I'm the pacifist paladin, so it requires something for me to actually get into combat for the first part. When I do, mm. I have had that test of it, and I played a paladin oh. when we first came out. Okay, this so is what I'm saying. Lay on hands yeah. is now a bonus action. That's good. That's good. I think it's a thing, it's... it's... But again, like, it's a healing they can actually do then, and it was like, you never used heal land hands in combat before because it kind of sucked using combat, you know. This this makes them a very good tank because they can just <laughs> heal themselves. Uh, touch yourself. Oh, bonus yep. action. Oh, yeah. It does make them a better <laughs> I tank. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> this is kind of yeah. what I think. That's fine. It does make them a better tank. I'm not going to lie for that. That That's a good thing. Um, it, I think the thing about the, the Paladin Smite for me is... I would have preferred they just said you could only use it once per turn on your turn. Because, again, I'm not going to lie. If you look up any of the other smite spells, they're fine. But I would never use them in replace of the divine smite, which just does damage. Just pure damage does better than any of the other so, smite spells. Unless they buff them. They could have buffed those other smite spells. Um, Here's the thing. Most of the... I, I kind of agree, and here's my thought, is that it just makes it on par with the other ones, the other smite spells, and that they required a bonus action. You cast as but, a bonus action, then use it. But that means you can only use one or the other, because they only last a turn. What yes. I'm saying is, 
if I don't, I would, I, if I have a choice between my always prepared Divine Smite and any of the other Smite spells, I'm going to choose Divine Smite first, because it's just better. Um, I think there's usefulness for some of the other ones. Like, I mean, if it, I actually liked the other Smite spells, like when I, Oh, I did. Well, I liked using them with Divine Smite when they were actually useful that way. Oh, you could, wait. I don't think that was legal. <laughs> Can it was. You do that? Oh, because, wait, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why they were so powerful. Oh my god. But then you're wrong. using up two spell slots for the one attack. Um, like Raffle Smite. Oh, that makes uh, sense, actually. The attack does 1d6 psychic damage, and it makes it a Wisdom Saver be frightened until the spell ends. Um, so like that one, it does some extra damage. They might be frightened with a save, but your save DC is never going to be particularly high because you are Paladin. So keep that in mind. Uh, yes. It might be enough to get it. Again, depending on the Kringer targeting. Um, so, Raffle Smite might be useful. And then Frightened was what? Uh, um, I usually liked uh, in... Uh, uh, bur uh, it's not Burning Smite. What is that called? Um, frightened... Uh, Smite. Disadvantage on attack, rolls and checks, can't move closer to them. That was it. Um, and it can make a wisdom spell to end it thing. Um, um, where are you? That's concentration for you. Searing Smite, and Thunderous Smite, and Wrathful Smite. Uh, Thunderous Smite, which one? I think it knocks them backwards? Which is, yeah, I mean, that one's uh, whatever. 6 Thunder... Strength Saver, push 10 away, keep feet away. Yeah, so, which is... Again, it's the difference between one does actually, like, radiant damage versus thunder damage, and radiant damage is hard to resist. Agreed. Um, and then Searing Smite, which I like, because they can basically just keep taking damage as long as they fail their saving throws. Uh... It was 1d6 Fire... And then it has to keep making damage. It's like... I think it's the thing is, all of them are not bad, but if you compare them to... I do 2d6 radiant, or 2d8 radiant damage on a hit. 2d8 radiant damage is just... better. Unfortunately. Yes. Um, and it's sort of like... I'm not saying there's not going to be times where you still will cast the other spites, but it used to be... If I want to use my spell slots up very quickly in my limited number of them, I might use one of them with, the, with my normal smite and just go through my yeah. spells very quickly. You know, that that was going to thing. It's like, it's that give up of like, ah, well, you know, I can do some, I can do this shock damage really quickly against this enemy and maybe get a special effect on them. That might be worth it for this round. Use up two spell slots out of my fifth level six spell slots, which is still not a lot of spell slots. Or, like, you know, so I feel like it's this, just, I don't know. I mean, sure, okay. I mean, you, you I mean, people are going to be, have different opinions on this. I actually think it's warranted. Um, they uh, could deal uh, a whole lot of damage per turn. It was pretty ridiculous. But, I mean, yeah, the fact that you can pair it. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even know. That. I don't think I, the guy even did that. He just always killed things. Um... Well, it's again... And here's the thing, they could buff the other smites, which could also be helpful, but... That's the only thing that I can think about, is if they buff the other smites, and they might... Not by a lot, but a little bit, it might make it worth it to choose between them. But again, it's that one thing of, like... You're you're making a bunch of spells they have feel like you don't really need to cast them or something, to a degree. I, I don't... It, it makes it less worth it, and most of the time you're not going to choose them, I think. Is an unfortunate thing. I mean, already, you don't choose them because you're a paladin and use them on Divine Smite. I chose them plenty of times. They're pretty <laughs> useful. I mean, again, like, I... it's it's the difference between, you know, like, yes, I can get a couple... Again, it's the, it's the same thing that you talk about of, like, doing one big attack. Use up all the spell slots and get one big attack. Or use up half of your spell slots when you use up two of your four or something, you know, for that one big attack. It, it can be it's... worth it. It's situation. Yeah, I still don't think you're allowed to do a divine smite and a thing. One spell slot. 
Divine Smite wasn't casting a spell before. It was giving up a spell slot. You are correct. I just never found someone who did it that way, so I was like, that's actually, wow, man, that, you could kill something quickly. I mean, that's the thing, is, is... Again, like, it's good shock damage, and you can do a lot of damage on, like, if you would Divine Smite on multiple attacks. Like, at 5th level, you get two attacks, you Divine Smite twice, maybe cast a Smite spell. That's three of your spells, so that's already one turn of getting rid of half your abilities. Yeah, I mean... There are plenty the of wizard is... spells that could do a lot of damage. Plenty of... Like, uh... Maybe a fighter can't do quite as much damage. Barbarian, maybe not quite as much. But they are there and can be maintained. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean... Like, I just always felt like paladins outshined everyone else who was supposed to be single target damage dealers, such as barbarians and, uh... Rogues. I'm gonna tell um, you... Uh, uh, the, the worst of the broken classes I've heard do not use power. There are much more broken oh. classes that I need oh. to be more, more. I agree. But I, I, I do think Paladin as a whole was not that powerful. It just seems Whoa. that way. It's, a, it's an illusion. Um, I mean, I found it that way, but whatever. <laughs> again, you played with someone that, that basically, again, it was situational. It was definitely a situation where it was that powerful, and I think that that is not an average adventure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Granted, I mean, I, 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 the I, only time I tried I've to seen a paladin played. I have never played yeah. a paladin. To be fair, I played fifth edition about like six times in my life. <laughs> as weird as that sounds, and I think twice they were I played a wizard. Um, it, it's, it's. I, I want to play. I want to play games more. <laughs> I understand that feeling. Uh, I also understand like one thing for like you know run games more. It's it's a weird feeling being. Though. I I want to run games too. I want I'd like to be in or run in more, run more. Again, it's it's just for someone that has more experience. Uh, I have experience with paladins and stuff a lot more, and I feel like this is like a very heavy yeah. nerf that I don't. <sighs> you in a way might be right that it was needed to nerf them. I definitely can see that with the divine smite. But I feel like it may have taken it too far to make paladins less viable, actually. In comparison I mean, to other classes. I don't know. Like I always saw them as jack-of-all-trades, meaning they should do everything a little bit weaker. They never really are supposed to be that. That's Bard. That's always Bard. Paladins are just supposed to be a fighter with some divine magic that can smite things. I mean, They're the idea is to. they can... Yeah, I mean, they're mostly, um, but they do heal, heal damage and tank. Um, <laughs> Lay on hands has never been... a little bit more... E even even as a bonus action. Utility. Yeah. Uh, uh, even as a little bit of healing, Lay on hands kind of blows. Not gonna lie. Either you're using spell slots to heal, but you only have a limited number of them, or it's freaking yeah. Lay on hands. And Lay on hands, it's an okay amount of hit points, but it's not great. It's five per level. Um, here's the reason I like Lay on Hands, is because it's guaranteed. Not rolling a dice is the nicest thing that is good about them. Uh, yes. It actually, in, and in my opinion, that makes, at least in Baldur's Gate, well, actually, that's not how it's used in Baldur's Gate. In Baldur's, but, oh, in Baldur's Gate is still a fixed amount. But it is nice that it's, like, a fixed amount. Again, I haven't played with a Paladin, and, uh... Like... But, yeah, no. I've used dice. my healing in a lot of situations where it's like, you can have some extra healing <laughs> i've yeah. helped uh, uh but the fact as soon as the cleric like, as soon as the cleric casts up so, you're like well yeah i find the cleric spells unless they have uh what is it beacon of hope oh huh? is that what it's called anyway uh um the one that makes it so uh the concentration <laughs> one that makes it so within a range they have like you do max healing unless you have that mm -hmm. up i i to be fair, I roll ones all the time when it comes to healing. I don't know what it is with healing, but, like, I'm a one magnet for healing. So that might be... The, to be fair, that might be part of why I hate healing. I do like healing in combat, though. I actually think it's more useful than lightning says. Uh, I do it all the time. And... Uh, bonus actions is really good for it. Like, I do feel okay. like um, healing word Agreed. is much better Healing word is good. Healing word is nice because it just helps and... I actually do like the idea of a battle cleric who mostly uses his spells for healing. It's a useful build. 
Yeah, I think Cure Wounds isn't necessarily bad, but, like, unfortunately, like, the slots could be probably used on something that would actually help the battle a little bit more than healing someone in general. I think, like, having things like channels that heal or healing word are actually used, or, or area heals. There are some that are like that that I think are very helpful. Yeah, so mass like, heal word and mass cure wounds. Healing in combat isn't necessarily bad. It just can't be... You, you have to manage it in a way that you're not replacing something that you could do that would be better. And I think that's not I, always easy. I agree. I do think that panic killing is important, though. Um, <laughs> which is why I like, which is why I I like mean, the Paladin. If, if you, well, now it's helpful because it's, it was used to be an action. Now it's a bonus action, so now you can actually can panic heal as a mm. uh, Paladin. You couldn't yeah. before. Well, you I, could. It was literally just, okay... Time to pour all of my healing. Okay, cool. I'm back up to good. <laughs> Even though it took a turn, it was worth it. You're never up to good for that. You're, you at most can get to half hit points. It's five. And you get you get D10s. It's five per level. Yeah, so at fourth level, where I have 40, 10 plus my constitution modifier, which should be good hit points, I can heal myself 20 per day. Wait, where are you getting D10s from? Don't, isn't just five hit points per level? Paladins have D10 hit dice, I mean. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, if I even have average, let's say I have an okay constitution, only have a 12 constitution, you really shouldn't have a paladin, you should at least have a 14, but 12 constitution, let's say, you should have at least have uh, 31 hit points. 20 is a good jump if you use all of your stuff in one go. Yes. Which I'm is usually how I use it. <laughs> but that's, again... Or how it, I would use it had I been... I, again, you I've at fourth level... Once giving up that in place of whatever damage you could deal, whichever version of it. Even if we were talking about the like 2024 version of it, me hitting with a smite and dealing uh, my, let's say like, let's say I'm using a longsword, 3d8 damage plus my strength instead of healing myself 20 and dropping the monster so it doesn't get more attacks might be worth it. Again, that's the kind of give and take that healing in combat when it's an action is a tough thing. And that's why yeah. I definitely. Bo as soon as you said, as soon as I said bonus action, I'm like, okay, now that's a really good change because you can actually use that in combat. Yeah, and I mean, again, it depends. Uh, like, I think healing's way better against. I just disagree with Lightning and Momo and you about healing in combat. I just really do. Again, I I can see where you're coming from with it, but I also like um, understand now, where they're coming from it. And that's where yeah. it's where, like, I'm in the middle of between it. Yeah, I mean, where they where they come from, they're basically just all like, I can do better things. But I'm like, well, or you can have a party who can also do good things, and then you heal them. <laughs> but um, the thing, look, I think the thing is, is that healing, you have to measure it against how much damage they're taking, and, how, and will that stop, save that person? I think the thing is, they say, heal once they drop. Rather than heal before they drop. That is the because best way to you, use healing word. <laughs> the best way to use any healing, because when you go to zero, you don't, like, you're just like, going to zero, you can't go into negatives. I think that's, the, that's the advantage of fifth edition, you know? Yeah, healing healing word, I always have prepared on my clerics as an emergency get up card. Um, cure wounds, I do less of, but um, sometimes I'll, but I will have it on, like, yeah, no, I mean, that's the main reason I use it, is, is an emergency get-up card. Problem with Lion Hands is you do have to touch, which makes it harder um, Yeah. than Healing Word. But it's much better for yourself, honestly, definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's it's, fact, it's like some... second win for the fighter, actually. Yeah. yeah, it is, actually. But better, because you don't have to roll. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's definitely good. It is the same average, though. Because normally the second win's a Drew. G8. So plus it's your technical level. Level, plus your level, um, yeah. which healing word is not your plus your level, or the lay on yeah. hands. It's just high. So yeah, and uh, but again, now you're getting on, more. I on, yeah, I roll ones I'm, on healing, including including <laughs> including second win. Literally, I'm playing Solasta, and my fighter rolls ones and twos as second win every time. I'm like, yay! That was a lovely six health back. <laughs> I, I think it's just there's just a lot of. Uh, for things like healing and stuff like that, and damage healing, there's a lot of balancing factors which are really, like, 
you kind of have to experience a lot of it to kind of get an idea of it. And the more I've what's, seen it, like, the more I... I will say, I feel like the Paladin has been very split. I feel like the Paladin's always been very split. It's either overpowered or underpowered, and there's no in-between opinion. I think... I understand why people think that way, and I'm kind of like a thing of my... I, I, I actually don't think it was either. I think because of it, it has an opportunity for some pretty gross builds for multi-classing, but on its own, I think it was just comparable to every other class, honestly. It, mm -hmm. it wasn't really that much powerful or that much weaker. It could defend as well as a fighter while dealing more damage. It could uh, heal almost as well as a cleric. Not quite. Nowhere near as good as a cleric, I'm going to be honest. Like, a, a cleric build... Like, I'm sorry, Lay on Hands is good, but it's not great. It's okay. I think it's... Uh, I think it's better than um unless you have the one uh unless you have the uh life domain i think it's better paladin still maxes out at two attacks compared to fighters four attacks uh yeah four attacks is such late level though you, you don't get like a third one to like level i know one, but I think. I, I think 11th level you get a you get a uh third attack um yeah and and the paladin I mean. okay so like i think what it is also is that we don't know how they're changing stuff for the fighter a lot because remember we were talking about fighter and getting yeah. more things like stat ups and stuff too yeah and that um, was the old fighter which that's yep. why I feel like it was more comparable yeah um, um I just I honestly just felt like a paladin could heal pretty much as good as a cleric while tanking just as well as a barbarian and hitting as hard as a fighter or sorry, reverse those. Tanking as much as a fighter and then hitting as hard as a barbarian. Or a rogue, actually. You know, like, I yeah. just felt like they were just... The thing is, again, their healing is, like, one-third of what a cleric would do, maybe. A real, uh, like, an actual cleric of the same level. The tanking is good as a fighter. If uh, they, only if they spent all their spell slots on healing, but you just have healing lay on hands. Again, the lay on hands is such a limited amount of hit points. It's so limited. Like, even at first level, five hit points in comparison to, like, uh, let's, even if you're not a channel for healing uh, cleric, a cleric five. has so many more spells than, a, than, than that. And that five hit points is good, but a cleric will yeah, have... Yeah, but a, cl a cleric will use a lot more of those spells on other things. A cleric would have two spell slots. I mean, again... So five health versus nine, assuming you got average. Yeah, it would be 10. Wait, hold on. Plus one 10, piece. you're right. Yeah, you're right. Or is it, is it plus one or is it plus uh, it'd be wisdom? 11. Plus wisdom? I, I thought it was plus one, but let me look. Um, T U C O T. Your wound. Oh, plus spellcasting ability for modifier. So yeah, okay, that can be a little better then. So that would be so like... Be... Generally speaking, if I'm playing cleric, I'd probably want it three. like a... Let's say... Like, even if like a plus three... So we we'll start be... with a plus three at the highest base rules. Mm -hmm. Base rules. So again, that means that so if... four point five plus three times two. Even even if I use one cure wounds, it on average is going to be higher than the lay on hands. Agreed. Well, yes. Uh, minimum it would be four. One plus three. Yeah. So minimum would be four. Maximum it'd be. Uh, yeah. So, I agree. I still say almost as good. But also just the fact that... But here's the thing. The predictability of it is why I think it's better. Personally. The fact that you can pour in exactly as much as you need to a situation. I, again, it, I understand that predictability is a very helpful thing. But I've also studied statistics. And I'm going to tell you, it's fine. It it's just, statistically, it doesn't feel very different, though, is the thing, you know? And uh, it's the lower, it's it the lower, very different. it's the, it's I roll the max lower when I only need to heal two points, and I roll ones when I need to. But roll you, you have to use five at a time. One health. But again, but you, only, you have to I use know. five hit points at a time. Meaning, if I use that five healing, I got to use all five of that healing. Do you have to do it in intervals? Of yep. Five? Yep. Okay. You have to use it in That's intervals of five. You know. This is all fine. You just do it when you're below. Instead of that mystery of okay, well, 
the person's at like two HP, and I could either do this or I could do again, this, like, and that's more predictable. So, because the cleric can just cast cure wounds and has like cure wounds ready. Yeah. Um, it does mean it... that like when I get to that healing post combat at first level, they're gonna heal more. And, and again, like it's just that. Certainly speaking, maybe at low levels, it, it, the paladin... I will tell you, actually, at low levels, maybe the paladin's a little bit better on all of them. But if I go to, like, 10th level, by then, ye pal, the cleric's really outshining things. The fighter, certainly I in the think, old editions, outshining well, things. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing from experience around 5th level character, where I felt like the paladin was way more powerful than everyone else. Kind of similar to the monk, where the monk is actually way more powerful, but it dies by level 10. Monk is okay. I've played a monk at low levels, though. And it sucked. Mon monk is the only one who can get four attacks at level five. You do no damage. I played a monk. I played it in gar Grinding Gears. I sucked the entire time. And I played a pretty standard I monk uh, build. I had a friend who always played a monk because they were broken and we never went past level I 10. I don't know. I... I just made a standard monk, so you gotta you gotta work. You pro it's probably something you can make a build to break it. I just played a standard one. I played a I think um, I was a Warforged monk, but it shouldn't make a difference. See. He did. I think he always did uh, wave the open hand. I, think. I did that too. I did wave the open hand. Didn't really give me anything yeah. better. Um, let's see. What's the level five you are at? One d six, which is fine damage. 26 is okay. Fighter of the Great Sword, 2d6. Less attacks is technically not. Or Barbarian of the Great Sword, which has advantage on everything. I'm sorry. Reckless Attack is so very good. I agree. Uh, so, yeah, but um, there's just a thing in 5e that I do know is a thing where. Attacking more is better than higher damage, because um, in most cases. Uh, yeah, that's true. It really is. I agree on that one. More attacks is better uh, than more damage. Yeah. Um, more chances so, for criticals, basically. Yeah, more chances for criticals, and that's why monks are really good at lower levels. But again, they peter out real fast. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Is like I, I think we weren't having as many combats at very low level, and so by the time we were getting to the points where we were getting combat. It was probably by 5th level, and I was already nosediving by 5th level. For like, yeah, I was okay, but I was really not keeping up with the other characters. Yeah, basically, I had a friend who always played monks and barbarians. Those were the only two classes he played. I, I think it's the thing that... So I, I've seen I, a lot more experience with them. I don't think paladins are any better than any of the rest. It's just that, you know, unfortunately, because people like... It's sort of like with Warlock. Warlock and Paladin are those two level dip classes that people love to abuse. But they take Agreed. one level of it just to abuse them. Yeah. yeah, no, Warlock is the biggest, and I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that. Um, but again, it's the same thing for Paladin. Hey, I took a level of it so I can Divine Smite. Yeah. Anyway, I'm I, I, I... Yeah, I mean, I'm totally fine with agreeing to disagree on this one, where it's like, I think it was needed, you thought it was too much. I... I can agree that I think because of a lot of situations it was needed, but I think they went too far, honestly. Yeah. Um, I think um, I think it, it it's sort of like I think it needed something to put it down to everybody else's levels, but they took it... I, I just personally think they took it too far. Yeah, you just think they shouldn't have made... It's, I just, there's so few things. Well, not so few things, but there's plenty of things which, uh, which do not have spell resistance. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I don't know why... Actually, actually spell so resistance doesn't it. exist anymore. It's magic resistance is actually really common. Okay. It's much more common now than you think. Okay. Well, if it's magic resistance, then it might have still affected Divine Smite anyway. No. Divine Smite, the original one, wasn't. It's I, I, spell or spell-like things, and it didn't count as that. It never counted as that, because it doesn't say in the original book. In the original Divine Smite, it does not count as a spell or anything like that. It just is extra damage. Extra radiant damage, specifically. Yeah. Which one? Um, so the thing is, specifically, a magic resistance says spell or spell-like effects. 
Because the spell-like effects are supposed to go to, like, if a monster has a thing where they do now, with how they say magic resistance. So it is a language oh, yeah. thing as part of it. it. Increases by 1d8 against Undead or Fiend. Yeah. I think the I, thing I, is... I, if we, it, now I it, remember, it, yeah. I think that's part of why it was so broken. I do remember that campaign. There were a lot of skeletons and stuff. Ah! <laughs> no. Yes. Undead... If, there were a lot of Undead... <laughs> Yeah, it, it's... <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, okay. If you're maybe in the Undead campaign tainting, and playing... Maybe that uh, is tainting my view of it a bit. Yeah. If I'm you're on an Undead that. or, like, Fiend-based campaign, you're instantly a so much better as a Paladin. It's sort of like the same yeah. for, like, a Cleric with, like, changing channeling Undead and stuff like that. Yeah, it was... The whole thing was that, like... I don't know why, but, like... The ships we were fighting were always piloted by skeletons. I forget what the plot was, honestly. It sounds like it was plot. <laughs> um, I've been there to be like, this game has a plot. Definitely. This just was a long time ago. And um, in fact, this is the game that Mads came from. Ah. Where I met her. But Little Mads. The game stopped. Yep. I haven't had a chance to do stuff with them. One day. Yet. Um. Yeah. Anyway, I think we'll agree to disagree on the paladin. <laughs> yeah, I, I can I can go along with that. It's just uh That's that weird thing of like I don't quite disagree with you though, also. Like the thing is like I agree but also slightly disagree with you. It's sort of like this weird point where you're like, you know. Um mm -hmm. anyway. I said it it definitely could use a nerf, but you know, too far. Uh, I guess which is yep. disagreement. You think it was enough? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think I think seeing it play. This is one of those ones that you probably have to test it out a lot more, uh, just to compare yep. it with some of the stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, um, why don't we talk about our week in gaming? Do you have anything? Yeah. I had a few things. Um, Actually, wait. No, besides Lost, I haven't had anything D&D &D related. No, I think I didn't have anything this week, actually. Did I have Monday? I think Monday might have been cancelled, and Tuesday, the game ended. And then we didn't have Wednesday. So I might have just been sitting around all week. I'm going to check my Monday thing to see if I did have something in my brain is just for hitting. Um, uh, Monday game is over here. I mean, I can say that I've been starting to work on a game I'm planning to run. Probably gonna Ooh. run it for anyone who's interested. I might post it on, like, uh, Roll20 and stuff. <clears throat> um, this is more just because I'm so desperate to play games. I haven't done it in... I haven't run a game in, like, since the... Well, the last one you were in, Tantos, which was, like, a year and a half ago? Ooh. A year ago? That was a while um, ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm probably gonna do like a. I'm I'm writing now a, basically a four game campaign. Ooh. Which I think will be nice. I think I'll, I don't like doing one shots with random people. I feel like you need friends to do one shots because you need expectations to be standard. <laughs> Agree. Uh, one shots are very uh, hard to do with randoms. Yeah. So I have to figure a four campaign, probably five sessions. Session zero plus four games. And that will probably just help me also just play and, you know, if it's also a bad group, it's be long, you know? So I think that's yeah. one thing is that it's like, it's like, worst case, it's like it falls apart. Oh, well, it was four games. I can yep. run it for someone else, too, if necessary. <laughs> um, that's what I've been doing D&D &D related, I guess. I had nothing this week. I, I actually looked and I had nothing this week. Because um, Monday Monday was canceled. Tuesday finished up a couple weeks ago. Wednesday got canceled because we were down two people. Um, Sorry, I had to now. Oh well, <laughs> we were already down one person, and, and we've done a second person. It was fine, you know. That was just yep. It, it wasn't something nice there that would be like, ah man, down two people. No, it was like, well, we're down two people. I guess. Uh, I guess in a combat area, we really do need to not be down two people. It was just situational. I worry that was going to be like that, so, you know. But yeah, fine. I mean, I, I, warned, I warned you when I found out that I was going to have to get that, that 
<laughs> first it was like, oh, I'll get it Tuesday and I might be okay by Wednesday. And I'm like, nope, I'm getting it Wednesday now because Tuesday was not the appointment. It was a, what was it? Uh, 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 consultation. Ooh, consultation. Ooh. Um, yeah, it was uh, an adventure. Uh, so quiet week. Uh, I guess we can leave that there. Um, sure. Uh, is there anything else then today? I think not. I think we're just kind of done then, I guess. Yeah. Because we've kind of gone two and a half hours, so I don't know if we want another deep yeah. discussion on it. I, I yeah, think the I, thing is, we're going to see for... Oh, God. We're going to see for more of the classes this week. We'll have to talk about it again. We'll have to see how things are going. I feel yep. like... A, I, I'm going to say this here, just from my experience. I don't necessarily mind all the changes. Like, even on the Paladin, it's like a whatever change in the end. It's not... I... I, I just... I don't know if I want to spend $60 on something that's like this. This is not a lot for $60. I mean, I agree, because most of this is going to be available online within the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to do it, because... I haven't decided well, yet. Part of me is like, I probably should because, because, one, I do have money, because I have a job. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, but also because I just feel like I help you review stuff, I do stuff like that. It's worth it. It, it part of me feels also like, again, it's that entire thing of, the more times I hear them say pre-order, the more times I'm like, that's corporate telling them, earn us more money. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's literally a thing. They say, okay, well, make sure to say pre-order as much as possible. And we're like, fine. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's the thing is, they've never said pre-order really on other books. They might have, they might have mentioned you could pre-order a book, but they never really throw it uh, out there that, as words as much. That is not wholly true. I or, could have just not noticed it too. Um they did they did push pre orders, I remember, for some of them, and then there was one which like it wasn't really pre order, but it was more just like they made it so you can only get it with like a bunch of other books or something. Um uh, but yeah no they definitely did pre-order for, I mean, I remember them pushing pre-orders for uh, Mordekainen, Tasha, Tasha's, Tasha's uh, pre-order? Yes, I don't remember them had, saying... They all had, they all had pre-orders. <laughs> I'm not saying they didn't have pre-orders, is what I was saying. It's like, I they didn't really throw it, they didn't like, like, you know, basically they mentioned it multiple times in each of these things they did. They mentioned the pre-order. Yeah, but they didn't have, like, hour-long videos talking about it either. Yeah, That's the other thing, too. Either. You know, it usually was just like, you know, here's a little bit of information, you can pre-order. You know, yeah. which is, like, a... Which, I mean, that's, like, a simple thing. I'm not saying, like, anything against the pre-order, but again, like, you know, they, they're just yelling it to the wind a lot more, I feel like, in this one. Yeah, but also, I feel like there's just a lot more opportunities for it to be yelled to the wind, which is the only reason you're noticing it. <laughs> like, I don't know. That could I be just... true! I, I, that could yeah. be very well true because of more opportunities. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's just out there a lot more. So that's that's my thought about it. It's like it's the same. I agree with you that it's like you don't get anything better by pre-ordering it. So why? Um, yeah, I think that's the other thing too. Is like the yelling at the wind. I'm like, can you give us some reason to pre-order it or something? Anything? I'm surprised. No? I'm actually surprised they didn't tie alternate art to the pre-orders. Mm, well, they want to sell those for more money. They sell them at the game store, though. You can only go and buy them physically at a game store. They still want to sell them for more money. Are they more They're, money? I think so. They're premium, aren't they? I think they, they are. I don't uh, think so. I think they were in some in the past, but I don't think they are for these ones. They've been I before. didn't see anything about it, at least. No, you're right. They have been before, meaning they probably are, but uh, they didn't mention it this time around, so maybe not. They're charging a lot more for the books in general, so maybe not. We'll see. Yeah, um... Let me check how you... There's the alternate cover for that one. I... I guess I have to find the pre-order page. Uh, they don't sell it on the pre-order page. 
much. I like it there. Oh, because it's because it's only in stores. Stores only. Yeah. Whereas, like, the thing is, like, I saw them listing prices for the like Tasha's and stuff as like two different. You are correct. I do remember that now, but I haven't I seen the price anywhere. Like they did it, for that. Are they, they might? Uh, are they doing the same thing they do with with, with uh, Magic Gathering and don't give an MSRP? But they are for the normal books. They're sixty dollars a piece. Well, not really, actually. They're just saying you can get a pack of them for $180, and you're saving money by getting the pack for $180. I saw yeah, an I ad that were... said that. Yeah, I thought they were going to up them to $80 a pop, weren't they? I hope you not. buy them individually? I thought they said that. They might have, which is so expensive. I'm sorry. Yeah, then... yeah that's Pathfinder's the thing. Pathfinder's giant book is 60 bucks. You know, and I, I thought think... that was on the... I thought that was worth it. And they and they up their prices, they and they up their prices recently because they switched to more, um, yeah. uh, 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 eco-friendly uh, materials. Which, yeah, and I'm sorry, like yeah, they up their prices. Eighty dollars a piece is so expensive. That's. <laughs> I agree. I, I thought I saw that somewhere. <laughs> it know. might be in like some of that because the thing is, I I thought about it too, and I'm like. Yeah, I really only saw, like, the only ad I can remember seeing about it was, like, $180 to save some money, you know, like, you know, bundle. Um, um, I can find a good place that has it. I did, yeah, this thing, there's, like, only uh, actually one place that has it, and I <coughs> what it is called, and I found it just a few days ago. Um... um Ah, uh, here it is. Um, oh, wait. Oh, wait, they are selling. Oh, and it's only 50 bucks. What? D&D Player Handbook provides alternate cover pre-order. I can buy this online? Oh, yeah. Um, so it's, fun, it's $30 for each of the digital books. That's a little high, but not terrible. Okay, I'm gonna give that one. Um, yeah, that's an interesting thing. On D and D Beyond, you can get it for hundred and fifty dollars for the pre-order for the physical bundle. Um, and of course. Oh, here's where it was. For $180, you can get uh, all three physical and all three digital on D&D Beyond. Because, of course, ah. they're not yeah, technically they're... having you save money and get both of them at the same time. You're buying them separately. Yeah, okay. So, um, yes. So, the, uh, yeah, so they're, they're going to be $50. Sorry. Uh, what? what were they before? I thought they upped the price. If they're fifty dollars, that isn't terrible, actually. Yeah. Uh, fifty-six dollars. They might have been sixty dollars before. Or fifty, honestly. Fifty might not be bad. Okay, I'll give you that. Fifty's not too bad. Um. So, but this is the D and D Beyond stuff. I'm curious as to. I guess you're not. We're not gonna know until the store ones if they're the same price or they're more expensive than all the covers. That's they are the same price. I am actually looking at a store. An online store has them. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I found a store that's only charging me forty five for them, which is cheaper than D and D Beyond. For the alternate art cover of Player's Handbook for forty five, uh, I get the feeling that they don't have an MSRP if some place is charging you forty five. I guess they're pulling a magic and they're like, ah, MSRP. I mean, who the fuck needs that? Well, mine's being charged forty. Yeah, so I'm, there's a website that's charging forty nine to pre order them. Oh, I found one that's charging forty five. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Black Diamond Games is charging forty five. Well, on on order, it says it is. Uh, is September 3rd when the the alternate covers are coming out? Because the 17th is coming out for the others. So, 
strange information everywhere. Oh, okay. So, but these ones you can't. Oh wait, no. Availability on order, so you can pre-order them. Yeah, cool. I'll do this website then. Okay, the special art will hit brick and mortar shelves on September third, so the special alternate art covers come out early. And the main release from Wizards is the seventeenth. Interesting. And so this place here that's saying September third for forty five dollars that I could put on order right now, uh for forty four ninety nine, is correct. Uh where are you Black Diamond Games? Uh California Ca C A, California? Concord? Am I remembering my states correct? Maybe? Who knows? It's me. I could forget stuff. Anyway, we should leave it here. It's enough. Um, I agree. We're diving into something that's figuring out right and stuff. I guess we'll talk about it more. We'll figure out more. We'll see what's going on. It's a thing to keep an eye out on. It's a discussion. Um, we'll let you people know what is there. Judge Uh. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was Hello? Weird. Hello? Now I'm working? Okay. You know, I had like a yeah. little hiccup there and um, it, 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 it popped me off the stream, I think, for, for sound for a second there. So, I'm working Yeah, no, now. like you went, you went super loud for a second and then disappeared. I, I was saying, um, my suggestion now is just don't do the pre-order, wait till it comes out, see reviews, and judge for yourself if it's an interesting. Again, I, I think mean, the I'm DMG is the one them, I can suggest. But... <laughs> yeah. The DMG is the but one don't... I can definitely suggest. The other two... Maybe? I don't know yet. Yeah. Alright. Uh, everybody, I guess uh, we'll leave it there. You know, we'll... You know, this was the deeper discussion topic. You know, fucking D&D ha haunting us. I mean, I kind of uh, figured that would be the case, so... I'm just putting that as the topic in my notes. D and D haunting. Uh, I'm gonna spell that right. Haunting us. <laughs> It'll be in my notes. Hi, right, everybody. Oh, got to hit that other button. Anyway, bye for now. Bye, farewell. Bye.